Good evening all, and happy Halloween. Just before the video begins, I want to say that if you are still waiting on that face reveal, all that you need to do is go to the description and check out my second channel. I create Harry Potter content on there, so if that's something that might interest you, feel free to subscribe. But anyway, tonight we're celebrating with 100 ghost stories, so I hope you're ready. Do you ever feel like you're being watched? Perhaps a cold breath chilling down your spine, even though you live alone. It's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. This happened about eight or so years ago, around Thanksgiving at my grandma's house. Everyone was asleep, except for me. The only people in the house were my grandparents, my mother, brother and I. No one else. I was on the computer, because I couldn't sleep. I turned on a small TV to watch adults swim while I browsed the internet. At around 4.30, I started getting a chill up my spine, and I heard some children laughing, distinctly the voices of a little boy and girl. I know I'm all by myself, as far as being awake, so I turn and look at the TV, and it was in the middle of an Inuyasha fight sequence, so there was no way the laughter was coming from that. I checked the computer sound settings and everything was muted. So it wasn't that either. I sat there confused for a few moments, while the giggles of the children were playing in the background. I figured maybe the radio in the kitchen was on. It was digital, so maybe it came on for some reason, or perhaps it had a timer. I got up, and I kid you not, as I was walking to the door, with each step, the laughter grew louder. From giggling to guffaws to hard laughter. Once the guffaws started, I started to hear a baby cry as well. What's going through my mind is, what kind of radio show is this? And I just took three steps, nowhere near the door. I took a few more steps, and the laughter turned hysterical, if not maniacal. The baby's cries turned to screams and wails, as if it were in pain, and I was trembling and terrified from each step I took to the doorway. But my mind was on autopilot. I needed to get out of there, and cross the hall to my mum, who would surely help me, and notice the weird sounds too. The last couple of steps increased the laughter and crying to an almost deafening decibel. It was like I was at a concert, and the speakers were directly in my ears, blasting noise. It was painful, and scared the shit out of me. I took all the courage I had, and as soon as I reached the doorway, I was going to sprint. I started to run, but then something shoved me, and I felt these hands at my chest push me back into the room, with enough force to throw me off balance. The crying and the laughter stopped as soon as I was back in the room. All of this happened within 20 to 30 seconds, but it felt more like 10 minutes. I was so scared. I cried and slept in the tiny armchair before my grandma came into the room and made me sleep in her bed downstairs. I am the youngest of two older brothers, my middle brother had passed away in 2005, and one of my cousins had given birth to a boy a few years later. So, he's never seen or heard of my brother before. Fast forward a few years, when the boy is old enough to talk, around about five. I guess my aunt was telling my mum that her son has an imaginary friend that he's been talking to, called... Michael. Now both my aunt and mother 
play it off as kids will be kids sort of thing. That was until my aunt began explaining this imaginary friend and how it had some coincidental things that directly related to my brother. First, this Michael would wake up the boy at night, wanting to play basketball. Kid didn't mind because he liked basketball too, but it was in the middle of the night. Secondly, Michael tells him he has an owie and points to his throat. I'll get to that bit later. Then the trippy part comes when my mum went to visit my aunt. She was sitting on the couch watching TV while my cousin and her son walked in. Her son was hesitant at first and then walked back into his room. My cousin went to my mum and told her. He was being shy because he told me that is Michael's mum. I was then told if you show a photo of my brother, he points to it and says, that's Michael. Even when I went to their house, the boy did the same thing. And this time, the cousin said that he whispered to me saying that's Michael's brother. Here's the kicker. My brother's name is Travis Michael. He liked to play basketball in high school and he died from a freak accident at the San Luis Obispo Sand Dunes while riding an ATV. It shattered his Adam's apple and basically suffocated. My parents have both passed away. Their wishes were to be cremated, the ashes put in a nice box and to be set on our wine rack. The wine rack has three shelves and I was instructed to keep one shelf between the boxes. Well, my dad passed away in 2011 and my mother in 2015. It took me a few weeks to find a box to put my mum in. In that time, I kept her ashes in the same room, but a few feet away from the wine rack. Apparently, someone wasn't happy about this. Outside, we had a doorbell and every single night at 3am, it would begin ringing and wake me up. I took the button portion inside so nobody could push it, and still, it would ring at 3am. I took the batteries out, and it still rang at the same time. I broke the whole thing apart, and it still rang. Our phone began to call itself and displayed my mother's name on the caller ID even though the bill was in my name. My dad's guitars hung on the wall next to his wine rack and the strings started breaking, one every few days. All of this stopped as soon as I got my mum a box and put her in there in the correct spot. None of this has happened since and I have zero intention of moving these boxes. And if I ever were to find a new house, they would be transported together, with something acting as a divider between the two. A girl I knew for a few years, and was very good friends with, passed away in a car accident. A few days later, I have a dream that she is standing in the centre of the road, and I am barrelling towards her. I run into her but then she appeared in the seat beside me. She forces my head towards her abdomen, where her stomach would be. There is a large mouth. The teeth are made of broken glass and sharp metal, and she keeps saying, shh. I wake up from the dream, and I'm still hearing, shh. I look at the foot of my bed, and she is standing in my room. She walks through my door and into the hallway. I open the door and follow her. She walks down the hallway and vanishes through the front door of the house. I didn't realise at the time, but my dad was on the couch and he asked me if I was okay and asked if the flickering lights are what woke me up. He didn't see her and I never noticed the lights flickering. I have a lot of stories. The first one I'm going to share 
is from when I went to a field trip. Sir Y grew up in Northern Virginia, and we had plenty of battlefields and such to visit for school field trips. In fifth grade, my class went to the Bell Grove Plantation, which was at Cedar Creek Battlefield. Cool House still has damage to her columns from gunfire from the battle. Anywho, my class was in the kitchen of the plantation, listening to the tall lady talk about whatever it is you tell a bunch of ten-year-olds about plantation life. There are these big double doors on each side of the room, and they are open. And then we hear a humming coming from outside. The teacher's aide, who I'll call Bulldog, because she looked like one, told us that whoever was humming to knock it off. But that's the thing. It wasn't any of us, and it was coming from outside. Bulldog goes out the kitchen, and comes back in and goes out to the side that leads to the garden. She comes back in, and says to the tall lady that no one is out there. But she could hear the humming right there in the garden. Doesn't sound like much, right? Well, fast forward a few years, and I'm reading a book entitled The Ghosts of Virginia, and there's a story about Belle Grove in it. Apparently the lady of the house was found in the smokehouse one day, badly beaten, half in the embers, with clear fist imprints on her face. She died just a few days later. A slave girl was accused of beating and murdering, and was hanged for it. And the lady of the house liked to walk in the garden, and was known to hum often. And various people over the years were witnesses, I guess you could say to the ethereal humming that would just take place in the garden. That just thoroughly freaked me out when I realised that I witnessed it too. When I was 14, my father died. There's no need to be sad about it. He was an ass. When he was alive, he loved to sneak up on people and scare the crap out of them. One of the ways he'd do that was to just silently creep up and chill out in the corner of your vision, until you realised there was this asshole staring at you. After he passed away, I'd be sitting in the living room watching TV, and I would see him just glide up into the corner of my vision, across the room, and stand and stare at me from the front entryway. I'd look over, and poof, nothing there. Now this can easily be written off as me being tired, or my mind playing tricks on me. But that isn't all of it. Dad loved to watch history and nature shows, and this was back when the History, Discovery and A&E channels actually played decent documentaries and biographies and the like. He was an insomniac, so he'd always be up late with one of those channels on, and the walls were incredibly thin, and I'd always have to beg him to turn down the damn sound, so that I could sleep when I was a kid. After he died, for a few months, at least once a week, I'd be in bed, and all of a sudden, hear the TV in the living room. And it would be a documentary on ants, or a biography of Churchill, and other things. It spooked me definitely. My brother wasn't doing it because, for one, he's deaf, and if he were to watch TV, he'd mute it. And also, he has his own TV. My mum worked nights, and it always happened when she wasn't home. And at this point, my sister had been living on her own for quite some time. I'd get up to see what happened. Maybe the cat had turned the TV on. Yeah, but no. Max the tuxedo was usually in bed with me, or outside, and I'd be able to hear the TV drone on about worker ants as I made my way down the hall, through the kitchen and dining room to the front entryway. 
and once I'd get to the spot where I could see the living room and the TV, all noise would cease. It would be dead silent. So quiet, in fact, you'd probably hear a spider fart. But wait, there's more. After he passed, the locked, chained and deadbolted front door would open all the time on its own to let the cat in. This once happened in front of everyone at different points over the winter, after our dear old dad had kicked the bucket. But the thing that really got me is what I'm about to tell you. I was down in the basement one night watching TV. My mum was home and in the living room. Whenever she needed me, she'd stomp on the floor to get my attention. And that night, she stomped something furious. I raced upstairs, and she's sitting in a chair with a wooden TV tray table in front of her. On the table was a styrofoam cup, and it was shaking violently. There were no open windows, there were no fans. I picked up the cup and checked it for wires or strings. Absolutely nothing was attached to it. No way it could have moved by itself. I put it back on the table and it would shake again. My mother, of course, is saying that it had to be my dad, and nothing else. The creepy visions, the cats coming through the bolted and chained front door, and the documentaries about ants being heard at all hours of the night, freaked me out as much as that damn cup. I know my mum wasn't doing it. I checked and double checked. The table was perfectly flat on the floor. It didn't wobble, and there was no way to make the cup move, and not the table itself, you know? Now my mum kept saying it had to be my dad. He was a trickster. So I just shouted out, If that's you, dad, knock it off. And it stopped. I didn't even finish saying it, and the cup had just stopped shaking. After the cup incident, the cat had to wait for a real live human to open the door for him. I heard no more documentaries in the middle of the night, and I didn't even see my dad creep up in the corner of my vision and stare at me. When I was 16, I started dating this guy, Joe, and he and his friends liked to do the whole ghost hunting thing in abandoned properties. This was back before shows like Ghost Hunters made it to mainstream culture. There was one that they were very fond of, on a road not too far away from where we lived. When we talked about the house, we'd just call it by the name of the road it was on. But, in the interest of trying to keep some anonymity, I'll keep that information to myself. So, I'd only been dating Joe for a few weeks, and one weekend, he and I, along with two other friends, decided to mosey over to this house and check it out. Now the story that everyone believed about this house was that this guy snapped one day, killed his brother in the barn, and then took an axe and went through the house and killed his wife and children. Inside the house on the second floor, some walls did appear to have been chopped off with an axe. It's unclear why he did this. Some say his wife and brother were having an affair and that the kids were not really his. And just to get this out of the way, I did try and find the history of the place, but I never found anything to prove that any of it happened. But it's history. Well, I'm not sure if it had anything to do with the things that happened there. So anyway, we go, we hang out and dick around and check the place out. Nothing happens. Boring, I know. But that night, long after I left, I dreamt that I was in the barn of the property. Our friend Anthony was with me, and there was this guy standing in front of me, telling me I could ask him any questions I wanted and take pictures. But Anthony kept getting in the way and asking stupid shit. All I got from that dream was that this guy said he was a ghost. He liked to haunt the barn and he was wearing a plaid flannel shirt with overalls, wearing a type of baseball hat, 
and he only had one arm. The next day when I see Joe, I tell him about it, and describe what the ghost was wearing. And then Joe looks at me pretty hard, and asks me, if the ghost was missing an arm? Uh, what? Yeah, he was, Joe. How did you know? Joe says that his sister would see a man, exactly as I described, and missing an arm, at night, hanging out in the hallway of their house when she was a kid, talking to a couple of other men. Apparently, Jolene would get up to use the bathroom at night, see these guys standing at the end of the hallway, and they'd be gone by the time she got to the bathroom. I hadn't met Jolene yet at this point, and years later, when she and I got talking one day, I asked her about it, and she confirmed that she used to see an armless man all the time as a kid. But wait, it gets a little bit weirder. Joe and I had another friend, Tina. Tina had a little boy, and they lived with her parents in another town, but also somewhat close to the plantation and axe murderer house. Her little boy would say there was a man in the basement of their house that kept talking to him. One day, he draws this guy. Guess what he draw? I have no idea if this thing was a ghost or what, but the fact that three different people saw him in some way years apart, but he always looked the same, genuinely creeped me out. The other story with that house, oh man. One night, total spur of the moment decision, we decide to head up to the house, because, for one, we'd had enough people to cover all areas of the house and barn, and two, one of us had a van, so we could take just one vehicle. We'd never had that many go at once, because, well, when you do things like that, it's best not to have four cars parked at an abandoned house's driveway. So there were eight of us at the time, two in the barn, two in the basement, two for the first floor, and two for the second floor, and two for the attic. At this point, I'd been to the house numerous times. I'd been through the whole thing and know it as well as my own house. And I was not on drugs, and had had nothing to drink. So Joe and I, we end up as the two who get to hang out on the second floor. Except, there's something I'd never seen before. This is going to sound so stupid, but I swear it's true. There was a bathroom there that had never been there before. I shit you not. I'd never seen this bathroom before and it connected between two bedrooms. It was big, with a giant, claw-footed tub, and it would be really hard to miss, you know? It freaked me the hell out, and everyone agreed that we'd hang on our assigned floor for at least 20 minutes, and Joe made us spend time in that bathroom. I was seriously wondering if it would fade out of existence with me in it. It didn't, thank God. But I went back there one last time to the house. I went in with friends that time, and not Joe. We went through the house again, and I kid you not, that bathroom was gone. I went through every doorway and every hole in the wall, and double checked all closets, and that room was just gone, like it had never been there. I still don't know how to explain that. I really wish I had been drunk or high that night, but I simply wasn't. This is one of my grandma's stories, that she used to tell of her aunts. They lived in Laos during the Secret War. Her aunt started talking with one of the American soldiers, and he started learning basic Hmong. After some time though, he stopped showing up. The basic consensus was that he was dead, but she kept waiting for him. Once things got bad and the bombs started dropping, they fled to the caves for shelter. One night as everyone is sleeping, she hears a familiar voice. It's the soldier. He's mumbling in a very broken Hmong. I'm back for you, over and over again. Her eyes are still closed, until she feels something reach out and grab her shoulder and slowly move down to her hand. When she reaches her hand, 
She said it wasn't a human hand at all, but a large animal paw. She briefly opened her eyes to see a dark figure, clearly not human, standing over her. Then she heard her aunt get up. Something was said, but she couldn't make out what it was. The figure then left, and my aunt followed. This was the middle of the night, mind you. The aunt was never seen again. The story is that the dead soldier came back to take her with him, or something else imitated him in order to take her. I grew up in a mobile home. When I was very little, maybe eight, I made a friend that lived in the floor. His name was Adam, and he was my best friend for all that year. He wasn't there every day, and he was only there certain times of the day, usually right as I would get home from school. Adam always asked me how I was, and what I did that day. Sometimes, he would ask me to go to different places in the house so that he could hear me better, as it was usually in the bathroom. I would sit in the tub and talk to him. My brother could hear him too, but he lived with my grandparents and wasn't over often. Dad, I don't think, heard him. But Adam never talked when he was around. He wanted me to go outside a lot, and sometimes I did, but I never met Adam or saw him. Then one day, Adam just stopped talking, and I never heard from him again. I'm not sure if it was a ghost or spirit of some kind. I hope it was. That'd be easier to swallow the truth that there was someone under my goddamn house. Which is impossible, because it's all cement with no crawl spaces. My mum found an old picture with me, with one of my late uncles. She asked me if I remembered him. He passed away when I was really young. So I unfortunately didn't remember much of him. She told me that he used to take care of me while both my parents were at work, so we had gotten really close. He was essentially another father figure for me at the time. Supposedly, my parents were woken up one night by me crying and screaming his name. When they came into the room, they found me holding that picture of us, the one I mentioned earlier. They got a call from my aunt that morning, that he had suddenly passed away. My mum said, the only other times I've ever cried like that was when my dad had to leave for deployment. She's convinced that was my uncle saying goodbye to me that night. My great-grandmother watched my great-grandfather die. They were truly in love forever. After he died, she woke up every morning and said, Damn it, because she was ready to pass away. My great aunts would hear her talking on a baby monitor they set up, talking to members of the family who had already passed away. Finally, one afternoon, they heard her go, John, finally, why are you always so late? They were frozen as John was my great-grandfather's name. They walked in ten minutes later, and she had passed away. She was just waiting for her husband to come and get her. In middle school, we took a trip up to Cataloochee Valley in Appalachian, North Carolina, to look at some historical houses we ate lunch across the river from Coldwell House, and a friend and I, Robert, finished early and walked across the bridge to check out the house. At the time, the house had not been refurbished, so there was a bunch of shit carved into the walls on the second floor. Since it was early winter in the mountains, there weren't many sounds. So Robert and I started walking on the creaky hardwood floors, and that was the only sound in the house. We were reading names, messages, declarations of love and confessions off the walls, 
and laughing when both of us stopped moving and talking at the same time and just stood quiet and listened as quiet and stilly as we could for something that we had both heard. After about half a minute, we laughed it off, figuring it was an animal. We were pretty spooked though, so we decided to leave the house and we walked out of the room we were in and wham, our friend John slams his fists into the wall around the corner to scare us. Richard and I yelled at him for freaking out and we were all laughing it off. John said that our teacher sent him to tell us that the class would be leaving in five minutes and to head back before then. We said, okay, John left. And knowing that it was him that we heard earlier, Richard and I went across the hall to the other upstairs room. A minute or two after we were in there, Richard noticed that there were carvings on the back of the door. So he closed it and we were reading those when wham, another slam, this time on the door. We jumped, stood there for a second and then laughed before opening the door and headed back downstairs, figuring it was John coming to get us. We walked out of the front doorway of the house and I saw John. He was across the river and it had been maybe 30 seconds since the door had been hit and there was no way he could have run down those stairs and across the yard and across the bridge. I pointed this out to Richard and we ran as fast as we could and managed to get to the class. I've never been more afraid in my life. A few years later, my mother who works in the medical field was treating a woman in her late 90s or early hundreds who grew up in that house. Apparently, since town was so far away back in the early 1900s, the Caldwells weren't able to bring family members into town to a hospital or doctors if they were sick or old or going to die. And a good number of Caldwells died in that house. They were buried hardly a quarter of a mile away. I was on deployment to Iraq. A buddy and I were sitting in a guard tower in the middle of nowhere around 1am in the middle of June and all of a sudden we hear a bunch of dogs start losing their minds, barking, growling, howling from what seemed to be in every direction. Now there are a bunch of Middle Eastern and Iraqi stories about dogs barking at night meaning a demon is near. But we were grown men with weapons, explosives and a radio. So we're good, right? No. A few seconds after the dogs start going off, an enormous gust of wind with a temperature that feels nearly arctic hits us. Now our hair is standing on end. We were watching every direction with rifles drawn and trying to raise the other towers and TOC on the radio. After numerous radio checks, and nothing in return but static, we really began to kind of freak out. I asked my buddy Weeks to go check the TOC on foot and checks in to see what's going on. After much debate and heated discussions as to why he's the guy that needs to go, he begins to walk towards the ladder down the tower and he reaches down to the floor and lowers himself. Another gust of wind comes knocking down the ladder and completely blowing off the camo net on the top of the tower. So he's hanging on the floorboards, feet dangling about 20 feet off the ground in full kit. I lunge and grab him and finally get him up. And he probably weighs about 250 pounds in full gear. I frantically try to raise somebody, anybody on the radio. And finally we get hold of our TOC, explain the situation and get a sit tight. There's something going on with the other towers. So we sit tight for what seems to be hours, but is more likely minutes. When the SOG, Sergeant of the Guard, comes out in a pickup and starts talking, it turns out nearly every other tower had experienced the same thing. And another guy that was walking from the makeshift chow shack to his cot 
got hit in the head with something and nearly knocked out. No one was around, and nothing was found on the ground that hit him. So now we had a platoon of grown-ass men in a combat zone, all who've earned their combat infantryman's badge, pretty much shaking in their boots. To this day, we all still talk about it, and no one knows what it was. We asked our interpreter about Iraqi ghosts, and all he would say is, there are ghosts here, but I cannot say his name. Naturally, this sent us all into a fit. This was over 10 years ago in Iraq, in a very small outpost, and connection to the internet wasn't that great or reliable. So every effort we made to try and Google what it could be, either failed, or led to more stress-inducing stories and images. I still get chills. This isn't my ghost story, but my husband's. We lived in a rural town. There is a haunted hotel in the neighboring town, the Thomas House. We were closing on our house, and he flew into town to handle the closing. He checked into the Thomas House. My husband knew that it was supposed to be haunted, but he does not believe in ghosts. My opinion is not important. The ghost hunters had just been there. They did not see the reputed ghost, but the episode made for scary TV. It was Christmas. The home was decorated with antique and country Christmas delights. And the clown room, yes, the clown room, was in its full holiday splendor. Walking into his room, he passed a little girl in the hallway. She passed by without saying anything. He said, hi. The little girl then went into the doll room. He described her as being special needs, just his impression. He didn't see any guests during his visit. Only the family who owned the hotel was there. One year later, I went into my new hairdresser's salon. She was a lovely local girl and had lived there for all her young life. And she knew the family and we were talking about the hotel. When I told her about his visit and mentioned the little girl, she turned white. She then turned to the other stylist and said, did you hear that? There is no little girl living in that hotel. The family is now older and all the children are grow up. The little girl that Paul saw was the ghost. She plays in the doll room, loves the clown room, and only appears to some people. Paul is the only person that does not believe he actually saw a ghost. There is a place called Meadowbrook Manor in Rochester Hills, Michigan, my hometown. It's on the campus of Oakland University, and it was owned by the Dodge family, and quite a few people have died there, including Young. My buddy worked there for years, and my wife hosts events there. I even proposed to her on the property. The house is both beautiful, with stuff like secret staircases through bookshelves, but is also very creepy. There are a few known ghosts, including Caramel Apple Girl. The story is she is a very young, quiet ghost that lives in the house and holds a caramel apple with peanuts. Numerous people have claimed to see her, including my best friend, who was a no-bullshit guy who would never tell anyone. He was cleaning up at the end of an event, and there, he saw a girl on the staircase eating a caramel apple. He asked her, are you okay? And she said she was lost. My buddy said to hold on, and that he'd find her parents so that she could come down. He turned to grab a phone for a moment and turned around, and she wasn't there. He checked the stairs, and the peanuts were there. He and a few others roamed around the house looking for the girl. He called me over, and I drove over there real quick, because I thought this was awesome. After another 30 minutes of searching, we finally called the police, and the employees locked the place up. 
when we were on the side of the house chatting with the university police officer, a light turned on one of the bedrooms and we immediately freaked out because that house had been searched for hours. My buddy looks at the two cops and they look at us and we're all figuring out who's going to do what. The cop starts to walk over, stops, looks at us and says, screw that, because he had heard the stories. He called in a bunch of backup before searching, and apparently there were no peanuts on the stairs when they went in. There's a bridge near where I grew up in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee that is notorious for screaming at people at night. The screams aren't audible to houses nearby, and supposedly, you have to sit on the actual bridge to hear the scream at all. Though I personally haven't tested it or anything. The common explanation is that it's a bobcat that lives under the bridge, but people have checked with dogs and find nothing. Well, some friends and myself had all heard this story for years while growing up, but had never tested it. So one night after a few beers, we get up the notion that we're going to test it. Five drunk guys pile into a beat up car and drive down and park on the bridge. It's 1.30 AM and it's dead silent out. We sat there for a good 45 minutes and nothing happened. We had the windows down and had started debating whether or not it was all bullshit when the scream happened. We had the lights off and there was a moon so you could see pretty well and there for sure wasn't anything outside the car, but it was loud and sounded like a woman with particularly powerful lungs having her skin ripped off right outside the window of the rear passenger side that faced off the edge of the bridge. Now I've heard bobcats in heat while hunting, and they do like to scream. It's hard to describe, but they do it in little repeating bursts. It was a good three to four seconds of extended screaming at incredible volume. We tore out of there like a demon was chasing us. A couple of miles down the road, we finally stopped and actually processed what happened. My adrenaline was going so badly that I was so scared and shaking uncontrollably. One of my friends had actually pissed himself, which I'd never seen anyone do. One of my friends immediately left the car and vomited. To give what I think was a good frame of reference to how actually terrifying this was, my friend whose car we were in wasn't even mad at the friend who pissed all over the seat. It was insane. To this day, I have no explanation for it. When I was a senior in high school, my mum and I went to the Glore Psychiatric Museum in St. Joseph, Missouri. I knew nothing about it, except that my aunt wrote a paper on it for her psychology class, and it was supposed to be really interesting. The museum itself is a separate newer building, with the actual old hospital next door. The exhibit has a bunch of equipment and patients' belongings from when the psychiatric hospital was running in the early 1900s. So there were lots of creepy relics from the golden days of messed up therapy and questionable procedures. However, none of this really bothered me. Side note, the museum also has separate exhibits about Native American tribes, local to the area and the Pony Express. We entered the main floor, nothing too interesting, just a gift shop and little displays. I felt fine until we reached the second floor where the psychiatric exhibit began. As soon as the doors open, there was a figure. In my mind's eye, I didn't physically see the figure and it kind of looked like a Death Eater from Harry Potter, only not big and without a head. It followed us around the floor through the psychiatric exhibit and eventually stopped. I told my mum to keep her feelings to herself so I wouldn't have a biased experience. I looked at the items left behind by former patients 
and I felt a presence telling me not to touch any of them, or something bad would happen. Finally, we made it to the Native American exhibit, and the figure was there again. It followed us, but stayed maybe 20 feet behind, stopping when we'd stopped. We took the elevator to the morgue area in the basement. You'd think I'd feel something. Nope. Nothing. Finally, we went to the main floor and left. When we got home, I mentioned to my mom it felt like something was following us. She agreed and said she saw it too. I decided to do a test. I had us face away from each other and draw what we thought it looked like. Turns out, we drew the exact same thing. After that, I emailed the museum and told them what I experienced. I didn't think they'd reply, but they did. They told me what I experienced was actually a very common occurrence among their ghosts and staff, and they've all allowed investigations from time to time. So yeah, Glor Psychiatric Museum. I used to work as a cook in a tea room that used to be a brothel back in the 1800s. We had the dining area and a little gift shop that sold different kinds of pottery and silverware. I would often be the last to leave and lock up and would hear random sounds like footsteps or something falling on the floor quite regularly, but was never fazed by it. One night, I was called in late to start prepping stuff for the Sunday brunch, so probably at around 10 to 11 pm, I hear footsteps upstairs and hear the lights coming on. I knew I was the only one there at the time, so decided to investigate. I walk up the stairs and look around. Everything seemed normal, so I turned out the light and headed back downstairs. When I see the lights come back on. I'm starting to get a bit freaked out, so I yell, Hello? With no response. I walk back upstairs to turn the light off, and as soon as I reach for the switch, I see this large vase just sort of lift up and move to the right, then drop to the floor. Holy shit. I was so freaked out. I called my boss, and she casually brushed it off like, Meh, it's regular here. I was helping my younger brother move into an apartment with his buddies and had to bring my two very young daughters with me. My youngest at the time was about two and a half or three and fearless. She went to every room with my brother, exploring and having a jolly old time until she got to the kitchen. Upon entering, my daughter froze. Her eyes were huge and fearful and within 10 seconds, she was screaming bloody murder and running for me as fast as she could, mumbling about the lady in the kitchen. My brother and I tried laughing it off, redirecting her and taking her mind off it. But my normally calm kid was hysterical and we had to leave. She told me in bed that night, the lady had red eyes and was so scary. If you know my daughter, you'd understand how unlike this it is. She was 100% convinced that she saw a lady just standing in the kitchen. And still to this day, seven years later, she swears that she did. I don't believe in ghosts or what have you. But her reaction seriously made me question that. My brother also experienced some wacky stuff while living there. I remember that they'd hear noises people walking around, and I think someone felt a ring tapping them awake one night. It's certainly fairly creepy. I used to live in a one bedroom apartment a number of years back. One night, I came home roughly at 2.30 in the morning and was exhausted. So I decided to go straight for bed. As I laid in bed trying to get comfortable enough to fall asleep, I heard a rather loud noise coming from the living room. Kind of like what would happen if someone jumped off the couch and landed on the floor. I lived in an apartment building on the top floor. 
so I know it wasn't coming from below me. On edge now, I continued to lay there, listening for any further noise. Suddenly, whatever created the sound in the living room made a thundering dash towards my room. It didn't sound like a person running, more like something four-legged. It was inhumanly fast, and the noise was deafeningly loud, until whatever it was stopped on a dime, which I assumed was about a foot away from my face. I refused to open my eyes, just on the off chance that something was there. The sound ceased, but there was an incredible feeling of dread and darkness that radiated throughout my room for approximately five minutes. But then it simply disappeared, instantly, and the area of the room returned to normal. It never happened again the entire time I lived there, but was certainly a wild experience. For a couple of years in high school, I worked at a donut shop in town. Old type place. They make the donuts fresh every night. All the workers there would talk about how the place was haunted by a former baker. Big burly guy who eventually just slept in his carpet back. My shift would start right before the restaurant slash front closed and before the bakers came in for the night. I'd be alone in the shop, the back where the baking would get done, and it would get absolutely disgusting. Jam and glaze all over the floor to the point I'd sweep up and have to scrape the floor with a paint scraper attached to a stick. I was an extremely lazy person and figured out I could just duct tape cardboard over the really bad areas and make my job way easier. No more jam floors. Well, problem with that was that basically cut my shift in half. So I'd spend the time I'd normally be scraping off the jam off the floor at the front counter. One day, I'm sitting there stealing time from the sweet owners, and I see some movement out in the corner of my eye. Look like someone wearing a flannel, walking back from the front of the shop, then turning and running into the back again. I thought I'd just been caught milking the clock by the owner. I never heard any noise of anyone coming in. So I go to the back to check and face who caught me. No one's there. I know I saw someone. I walked upstairs to the offices, which I had never been into before. No one. I later asked what the ghost wore when he was alive. Always flannel. So I worked in a haunted daycare. My personal story happened while I worked with the nine to 18 month babies. At nap time, they all sleep in their own cribs and the teachers all huddle in the furthest corner so the kids will stay asleep. One day, all the kids were asleep, which is a feat in itself. So I'm sitting facing the room at large, talking to my coworker. As I'm checking the room, a ball that was left out rolled across the floor, just straight up moved four feet across the floor. It didn't start anywhere near a baby, and even if it had, they were all asleep. The ball was slightly deflated, and it even sounded like someone tried to grab it. That sound of fingers trying to find purchase on rubber. Now normally I'd attribute this to a trick of the light, or the AC kicking on. But my co-worker, who had been looking at me, turned her head at the sound and said, What was that? I told her what I'd seen. We had a nervous chuckle, and we asked the ghost to kindly not wake any of the kids. Other co-workers had felt taps when no one is behind them. We've seen things move on their own, and one even saw something too tall and abstract to be a kid run down the hallways, only to disappear. I've had a few experiences that I can't explain at my current house. When my family and I moved in, 
I was around seven years old, and I'm 20 now. I don't remember how soon after we moved in this happened, but I was laying in bed one night, just about to fully fall asleep, when I shit you not, something grabbed me by the ankles and pulled me a few inches down the bed. I didn't fall off the bed, but I sure as shit did not sleep that night. Another time, I probably would have been 13 to 14. I was playing Battlefield and fell asleep while the game was still going and woke up at around 1am, turned around to get my bearings and in the kitchen doorway, about 20 feet from me, there was a tall dark shadow, not a transparent figure. It was solid as night itself, standing tall, so tall in fact, its head was crooked against the ceiling at a 90 degree angle. I froze for a moment and inspected it, making sure it was there, and it was. I stood up, with the TV and Xbox still on, to provide some semblance of light in the room, so that I could turn on the stairway lights that led up to my room. When I went to turn off the Xbox, I looked back to see if it was still there. It was not. This one is a little more dismissible, if you so choose to dismiss it. But shortly after the last thing, I also was given a dream slash nightmare slash scarring experience by one of the spirits or whatever you want to call them in my house. I was on Reddit and on the front page. So I was looking through links that I thought were funny. I clicked a link that had a picture of a girl. I clicked the picture and immediately felt a knot in my stomach and saw that the thumbnail with the picture had changed to something entirely different, like a dog. I clicked the link below it in hopes that it would be normal, but I was wrong. My screen blacked out and just that picture opened on the screen. The words, Daddy No, in bright red text started typing themselves on the screen. Quickly, and aiming to fill my screen before it could, I woke up. On another occasion, I had a friend over, one with the connection to the occult, and they had their own experience. He saw a figure in the kitchen doorway, same as I saw, same time of night after the two of us had fallen asleep. I took that as solid confirmation that I'm not going insane. On another occasion, I was at a friend's house and we were in the basement playing video games and decided we wanted snacks. Now my friend had their own experiences in their house. So they said we should set up a camera in the basement to film while we were gone to see if on the off chance we would capture something. We set up a Mac with the webcam recording the couch where we were sitting. Upon returning to the basement to get back to the ever important video games, we inspected the video to see what we captured. The video played for a minute or so before we both heard a voice at the exact same time saying, make it quick. Nothing was disturbed from the spot in the basement as far as we could tell. So we didn't know what the thing had done so quickly, but rest assured, we had no plans to stay there that evening. With the amount of experiences I've had myself, I am either crazy to some degree or right to some degree, but these accounts are all true, at least for me. My good friend shared this story with me and I've never been able to shake it or retell it as well as him. He is about 40 and divorced. Back when he was married with a one year old daughter, him and his wife bought a house and moved in. It was apparently an old house that needed some fixing up, but they got a good deal and were ready for the work. After a week or so, he notices a life size doll in the corner of the nursery where his daughter sleeps. It creeps him out because he's a normal human being. So he turns it around to face the corner. So it isn't staring at him. After putting the kid to bed, he goes downstairs and asks his wife about it. Where do we get that doll? 
She looks at him and says, I don't remember. I assumed someone gave it to you for our daughter, and we moved it here. He's a little weirded out, because he didn't remember moving the doll, and wonders if maybe it was in the house when they moved in, and he didn't notice it. The next morning, he goes to get the kid out of her crib, and notices something. The doll isn't facing the corner anymore. It's looking at him again. I'm getting shivers already just remembering him telling me this. That's enough to creep anyone out. So he throws it in the closet and shuts the door. At night, he has an argument with his wife. I don't remember what it's about, and it's not really relevant. But the point is, they were getting into it a bit. They were loud and focused enough that they didn't notice their daughter crying upstairs. At a lull in the argument, his wife hears her, at a lull in the argument, his wife hears her, and says she's going to check on her. But he just tells her she'll be fine. Let's hash this out. Another minute goes by, and suddenly, he realises he's practically having to shout over the noise of his daughter screaming from her room. It sounds different. It's not a normal cry. He glances at his wife, and quickly starts up the stairs. What he saw when he opened the door, literally makes my eyes water, with fear when I think about it. The closet door is open. The life-size doll is sitting next to the crib, motionless, and its arms are reaching through the bars towards his daughter. Just stiff and motionless, like it was caught in the act before returning to a dulled state. Needless to say, the doll was thrown out, and I believe burnt. There's no explanation other than something seriously demonic. This story of that house goes on for much longer though, and I always get shivers trying to remember it. We have some close family friends whose son died in an accident when he was 12. This kid was incredibly strong-willed, and often mischievous, and he remained that way after he passed. He would often appear to his younger sister, who had been the one to find him after he died. His father was a violinist, and as he was playing for his memorial concert, she noticed him sitting on the edge of the stage. He then stood up, walked up to his dad, and plucked his violin string, and broke it in the middle of the concert. The kid loved airsoft guns, and as a reminder that he was around, he would often leave airsoft pellets around the house for the family to find. You could wipe a counter clean, turn around, and find a small pyramid of pellets on the counter when you looked again. Soon after he passed, my mum introduced a friend of hers to the family, who started visiting the family weekly, for a class the mother offered. When this friend was young, she used to see and talk to spirits, but hadn't had any experiences in years. After she started visiting them, he started appearing to her on the car rides home, and have her pass on messages to his mother. She would come back and relay very personal memories that she couldn't have possibly known. This went on for a few months, until one ride home, her infant started giggling and squealing for no reason. She looked in the rearview mirror, and saw him playing with, and I think, tickling the baby. This freaked her out, and she told him he had to go, and he never came back again. The final most profound thing he did, was a year after he passed. On the day that should have been his bar mitzvah, which he had been preparing for, the family had a memorial that day, and when they got home, they noticed someone had left them a voicemail when they were gone. They played it, and it was the song that was supposed to be played in his bar mitzvah, sung in these angelic, ethereal voices. They kept the voicemail for years, and showed it to my family and it was honestly one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. 
I've had quite a few stories from when my father passed as well. Some creepier, but this one is certainly my favourite. I was 13 and living in a small farming town. It was close to Halloween, so the change in seasons was in the air. My friend was staying the night with me, but by 10pm we were bored and decided to walk to their house that was about two miles outside town. We reached the edge of town and the last street light illuminated the start of the empty country road that we had to walk along. We didn't think twice about anything scary, as it was mostly fields and tree lines, with the worst predator being the occasional coyote. We walked far enough down the road that the street light behind us was a distant oasis of light. It provided just barely enough illumination to remind us it wasn't all empty fields along the road. There was also a cemetery that ran for a short section beside this part of the road. My friend tried to jokingly say scary things, but their words echoed hollowly in the silence. Just as we reached the end of the cemetery and the tree line separated from the fields, we heard a noise. There was something in the trees and it was big. It was making a lot of noise, but it wasn't thrashing wildly. It seemed to be moving towards us slowly, but purposefully. The sound of the dead tree limbs breaking as it pushed past them sounded like explosions in the darkness. That was the first time in my life I understood a deer in the headlights. Even though my heart was hammering in my chest and adrenaline was being poured into my system, I was frozen. The primal part of my brain was screaming danger, but it wasn't providing me with any choices to pursue. It wasn't until a blur of movement crossed in front of me that my full mental faculties engaged. I was able to process the fact that movement was my friend running past me down the road as fast as he could. I decided that was a valid option and took off as fast as I could. We reached my friend's house safely and we spent the rest of the night theorizing what was in the trees. In the morning, I walked back down the road and past the cemetery. During the day, the eerie atmosphere was gone and in the light of day, I was able to see one of the adjoining fields had a small herd of cattle. For the rest of my life, I have been 99% sure what we heard was a lone cow in the trees. It heard our voices and started coming towards us. But it's that little niggle of doubt, the not knowing for sure what it was, that causes me to lean towards a more supernatural explanation. My brother passed away on December 22nd at 4.40am in 2004. I've had a few things happen, like things flying off the shelves or hearing my guitar strings being plucked, but two years ago was probably the weirdest. Two years ago, December 21st, I went to bed at 11pm. I usually keep my phone on silent but I was woken up by my phone ringing in the middle of the night. I saw a number I did not recognize, and normally I answer anyway, but something felt off and I just couldn't. I couldn't explain the feeling, but I just felt like I shouldn't answer. The phone number left a voicemail, but I couldn't make anything out. I also noticed that they called the number on December 22nd, at exactly 4.40 a.m. I tried to call them back in the morning, but when I called it said the number had been disconnected and could no longer be reached. I tried to look up the number everywhere and found nothing. I spent a year living in an overseas haunted dorm in Texas 
that had once been an orphanage. Over that year, I had many paranormal experiences, but most weren't scary. Two, however, were. To start though, I'll tell you about my first two nights there. The first night, I had come back after dinner with former co-workers. I had spent my day moving and with going out for dinner. I didn't have much time to unpack anything more than my bedding before calling it a night. That night, I had a dream that a boy between the ages of 10 and 12 came bounding through the front bedroom doors of my apartment and into the bed where I slept, as though he was saying hi. The bedroom door was right inside the apartment's front door, so from my bed, I could see out into the hallway, where an adult male stood. I couldn't make out any features, just more of an impression of him. He stood back, arms crossed, watching. Weird dream, but just that, a dream. When I woke up next morning, both my doors were wide open. Maybe I didn't shut them all the way I thought, even though I'd sworn I'd locked them. Maybe one of the girls was curious and snuck in, except it happened again the next morning, and I know the doors were closed and locked. I wanted to set that up before I tell the first scary incident. It's important because the floor was haunted by three ghosts, a preteen boy, a nun, and an evil male spirit. A fact I didn't learn until after I'd been there for more than a few weeks, and already had a handful of experiences under my belt. I have never been good at the whole sleeping thing, and at the time, falling asleep often took hours. When I did fall asleep, the slightest thing could wake me up. One night, I awoke with a start. It was like someone had put their hands right by my ears and clapped loudly. When I woke, I looked at the foot of my bed and saw a tall, dark shadow that blocked part of my door and the small sink and mirror to the left of the door. My bed backed up to a window and the streetlight outside kept my room pretty well lit at night. It made the black shadow I saw seem ever deeper in comparison to other things I could see in the yellowy light. Of course, I didn't just see the shadow. I felt overwhelming hate radiating off it. Whatever it was, didn't want me there. Problem was that I couldn't escape. I would have had to run right to it, as it blocked the doorknob. So I did the only thing that I could think of that didn't involve escaping through it or jumping out my third story window. I threw the blankets over my head and repeated the Lord's Prayer until I fell asleep. I did see the shadow once more, in a situation similar to the first. The only difference is that I saw the shadow start to form. It started as a black ball that spiralled out, growing into a shadow person. I handled it as I did the first time, hiding and praying until I fell asleep. I am convinced these visits were the evil male spirit. The second terrifying thing happened on the first floor. My boss asked me to catalog what was in the first floor rooms that were not occupied. One of the RAs went with me and together we walked from room to room making a list of what we found. Directly under my room was a laundry room, but unlike the one on my floor, this one contained a hallway that stretched back in an S shape and was lined from floor to ceiling with storage closets. As we walked deeper within the hallway, we grew quiet. Everything felt wrong. Like if we kept walking further, we would see something horrible. Or worse, we couldn't make it out alive. So we bailed. My boss would understand. Upon leaving the laundry room, there was one room left to check. I opened the door into what seemed like a monster storage area. A window on the far wall showed a few outlines of shapes. I remember seeing a bicycle wheel, but not much else. 
and the room was so dark. It also felt so much worse than the laundry room, and I couldn't bring myself to reach into the gloom and find a light switch. If I had a flashlight, I know I would have turned it off. The room radiated evil, and I knew that turning on the lights would illuminate whatever was the source of what I was feeling. So I slammed the door shut in a hurry. Here are a few other stories of what happened in the haunted dorm. The dorm I was in was a high school dormitory, located in the high school. However, the school itself was operated by a four-year university, located down the street. During my first week in the dorm, I had another head-scratcher of an experience occur. My first day of work, I went down to the university campus to meet others in my department, to make a campus tour and all the usual first day activities. At three, I headed back to my floor to welcome the girls home from school in an effort to start getting to know them. One by one, the girls walked in and headed towards their rooms. One by one, they returned, reporting that their bedroom doors were locked. I was the only person on the floor who had keys into their room. Not even the cleaning people had keys, and everyone, including the girls, would leave their doors unlocked unless they were inside their room. The girls hadn't locked their doors, and the cleaning staff hadn't locked their doors either. In fact, the cleaning people never entered the students' rooms unless they had private bathrooms, which only two of the girls, both seniors, did. And I sure hadn't locked the doors. The next day, the situation happened again. And yes, I thought it was strange at first that two incidences both happened two days in a row. The following Friday, I found myself as the only staff member on the floor as my RAs had gone out for the evening. The hallway was L-shaped, and I was sitting right at the corner, telling some of the students about the weird things I had experienced. As I recounted what had happened, the door of an unoccupied room began shaking, as though someone were trapped inside and demanded to be let out. One of the students beside me screamed and scrambled into my lap as she tried to run away. I was scared as well. I began laughing nervously, and the students screamed at me, asking why I was laughing. Well, it was either laugh, run, or scream into the night, and I didn't have anywhere to run. As the semester went on, and the students got to know me better, they all began to call me mum. It was very common for them to come to my room, and I would keep my door open whenever I was up and around and call mum to get my attention. After the students had gone to bed for the night, I would hear one of them call out mum. Each time it was a different girl. When it happened, I would stick my head out, but no one would be there. Plus, with the building being nearly a century old, you could hear as someone went running away, or as their door opened or closed, and I never heard anything beyond the word mum. In November, I began hearing flicking of metal blinds that hung in the living room. Each night, I'd hear ping, ping, ping until I fell asleep. One night, I had been asleep, but I had clearly grown tired of the sound, and I awoke screaming, For the love of God, stop it! And I never heard the sound again. In December, one of the students was packing up her room, as she was moving back to study in her native country of Mexico. She reported hearing a woman's voice softly praying in Spanish. It was our first visit from the nun, but she would become part of my life during the next semester. In the spring semester, all of the hauntings were benign. One of the seniors moved next door to me, and my side of the L was much quieter. When she moved, we both began to experience something new. At 12.30 a.m., I would hear one single knock on my door. Five minutes later, the same thing would happen to her door. This occurred nightly for the remainder of the semester, and in each case, we would peek outside our rooms, but we wouldn't see anyone or anything. 
As summer neared, my life became more stressful. The job was taking a toll on me, and I worked 120 hours a week, and only had one or two days off a month. The girls were preparing to leave for summer. But I was trying to figure out if I wanted to stay another year working in the dorms, or if I wanted to return to school full time. At the time, I was also preparing to have outpatient surgery to have something removed from my sciatic nerve, and two of my RAs didn't like that I would have to take a couple of days off right before the semester ended in order to recover. I was also nervous about the fact that I would be living alone in a haunted dorm for the summer. So I admit, I was not in the best mental health, which may colour how I perceive what I experienced. As the girls left, I found something strange started happening when I went to bed. At the time I slept on my stomach, like a starfish spread across the bed, and I would feel the covers flatten between my legs. Then, the mattress would depress as though someone had sat between my outstretched legs. Then a soft hand would touch my calf. I should have been terrified, but when the hand touched my leg, I only knew peace. With such a calm, warm feeling come over me. I wound up falling asleep quickly each night, and I'd like to think it was the nun helping me calm down from the stress I was experiencing in my personal and professional life. I haven't figured out who was responsible for all the hauntings. I think the doors being locked, the voices calling me mum, and the knocks were all the boy. If I'd had to guess, I'd say the door rattling was him as well. It didn't seem malicious, just timed perfectly to scare the students and myself. My BFF once mentioned to me that her boyfriend could see and feel ghosts and spirits. He's kind of a one-upper, so I brushed it aside and never thought more of it. One Saturday night, we're all hanging out at my house, where I lived with my mother at the time. We weren't drinking, just hanging out and chatting. Suddenly, he went very still and silent. My BFF asked him what was wrong and he said he felt a presence in the house, and it was very strong, and told us to keep chatting, like we were, and he was going to feel for it. My BFF and I returned to our gossiping. A while later, he speaks and mentions the spirit is in the kitchen, and it appears to be male, at least it does to him. He says it didn't feel like other spirits though, more like a good presence slash guardian angel type. I still don't really believe him, so I start asking questions. He says the entity is definitely related to my family, and that he is young. Then suddenly he turns to me and asks, Did your mum have a miscarriage? The blood drained from my face, and I get goosebumps everywhere. My mother miscarried a child before me. It would have been a boy, my older brother. There's no way he could have known about my mother, because my BFF had no idea either. Then he said, had she named him? He's trying to tell me it starts with an A. I started trembling. My mother had told me she had planned to call him Alex. He went on to explain how he believes it's my unborn older brother, and he's a guardian angel figure to my mother. He assumed he was there at the time to watch over her, it was unbelievably scary and accurate, because at the time, my mother was going through a really bad bout of depression. I've never doubted his ability after that. When I told my mother about what happened, the next day, she was sobbing, and thought that she felt a presence by her side. She thought it was her grandfather who she'd always been close to, not her unborn older son. And I still get chills to this day, just thinking about it. This story is about seeing my sister. She passed away seven years ago. First time I saw her started in a dream, where she was yelling at me to stop being a hermit and go out and meet people. 
When I asked her how, she said she didn't know, and to put an ad on Craigslist. That's how I met my husband. Second time I saw her, I was awake. I was walking out of my apartment complex to go pick up my son from school, and there she was leaning against the building waiting. She even walked with me to the school. My son ran up to where we were standing and started talking to my sister like he saw her often. On the walk home, my sister was walking between us and this young kid tried to walk through what he saw was an empty space. He stopped cold freaking out before shooting around the side of my son and running away from us. I can't remember what we talked about but it felt amazing to see and talk to her again. Last time I saw her was eight months ago. I was at my parents' house and walked into my niece's room to talk to her and noticed her twin daughters, who were around eight months old jabbering away. I took a second look before I saw my sister sitting there in front of the babies talking to them. I commented, Hey Jamie, do you understand what they're saying? Not thinking? My niece freaked out and yelled at me before leaving the room. So I sat down behind the babies and we talked for about 20 minutes. My dad walked into the room and apparently catches a glimpse of my sister and kneels down crying, telling her he's so sorry. She tells me to tell him that it's all right and that she still gets to talk and see her grandbabies and that she loves you, dad. I've got a few stories, but the one that stands out the most involves an old farmhouse that had partially burned down and never been demolished. The local urban legend was that the last family who had lived in it had died about 20 years before. The father killed his wife, and his children, varies on the tale, then killed himself. Then the house caught fire, or he set the house on fire, depending on who tells the story. There was a standing dare, spend the night in the house. Supposedly someone had, and was, sent to a mental hospital. Other kids tried but got spooked, or saw something. Just keeping an open mind given my experience. There were four of us, kids aged between 12 and 14 who tried to spend a night in this old house. Our parents weren't thrilled with the idea, so we decided to walk to the house from a friend's house one night, while sleeping over. His parents were sound sleepers, and he had his own door out of his house, through the basement bedroom. To make a long story short, we got there. We lay down in a large room that still had some ceiling although in retrospect this probably wasn't the best idea, but structurally, we were fortunate. Then, all four of us woke up at once, and, for the same reason, near as we could tell, we'd all started to awake in response to someone screaming our names. One guy said it sounded like his mother. I thought mine sounded like my father. It was like a simultaneous nightmare. But given what we were up to, even that wasn't too inexplicable. The creepy part happened when we heard screams from upstairs. A woman's voice, shrill and panicked. It didn't sound like a scream from the movies. These were babbled words, and then some other garbled noises that didn't sound quite right. Then there was a loud thump, and then nothing for a few moments. Then we heard a gradual thudding sound as though something were being dragged across rooms, and was knocking against furniture and doorways. We stayed where we were, each of us listening intently, until we realised that we could hear this thudding sound at the top of the stairs, leading down into the room where it was at. Someone shone a flashlight at the highest point we could see. Nothing was visible. Then there was another thunk like something had dropped a few inches onto a lower surface, like the next stair down. Within the beam of the flashlight, a flying insect took off, and so did we. I've told this story before, but exaggerated it, saying we heard sounds from where we should have been able to see something. The truth is, 
There could have been something upstairs, possibly with a stereo with haunting noises. But for some reason it doesn't make much sense. But it's more rational than ghosts. It still is the most terrifying moment of my young life though. My parents and I were taking a tour at a house we were looking into moving into. I remember when we walked past one of the rooms downstairs and I got goosebumps when I looked into it. The lights weren't working at the time, so the realtor left it dark, making it even creepier for me. Fast forward a few months and we moved into the house. I hadn't really thought about the room since then. One day, I was just kicking a ball around downstairs out of boredom, and at one point, I swear I could see something out of the corner of my eye. I looked towards it, and it actually stayed for a split second, and then vanished. It looked like a little girl wearing a bright white nightgown, and it was standing right in the doorway of the room. It scared the crap out of me, so I ran upstairs to tell my parents. They laughed it off and told me I was spooking myself. A few weeks later, I was doing the same thing, kicking a ball around downstairs. Again, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. This time, I didn't look right away. I made an attempt to kind of glance at it and making out just from my peripheral view. It was a tall, dark figure this time. Then I decided to look again, and it stayed for a split second and vanished. It was definitely tall, dark, and male, standing in the doorway of the room, and it was pointing inside of said room. Needless to say, I stopped kicking that ball around downstairs. Weeks later, I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. When I came back, I tried to go to sleep and heard knocking on the wall. My room shared a wall with the spooky room, and it would knock a few times. Then I heard what sounded like a baby crying in that room. Then the knocking would start again, then repeat. It went on for a while, and I was too frozen with fear to investigate. I eventually fell asleep, and I had a dream about me walking past that room, and I saw a tall man hanging from a noose in the middle of the room, with the girl in white crying in the corner, and a little boy running in circles around the man. Since then, I haven't had any other experiences with that room, and my family thinks I'm just trying to spook them when I tell them about it. I'm now living on my own, and glad to be out of that house. My mum has always held the personal belief that there is some connection between what people call poltergeist activity and stressful, heavily emotional environments. Personally, I don't think this is any surprise, given her strained childhood and teenage years, most of which she spent living in the pub. Aside from the general delights of living above a pub, in the 1970s, fights, IRA bombings all over central London, and heavy drinking culture, there are numerous types of activity that she experienced. There were four levels, a top attic area that was mostly used for storage, the first floor living area above the bar itself, the public bar and seating areas, and then finally, a basement. Mum didn't like to acknowledge the activity at the time, which was fair enough, since she had no choice but to live with it. On the living floor, things unfortunately weren't as active. But, as in the style with most old pubs, there was a staircase straight up from the bar into the apartment area. However, some nights, my gram would delight in sitting on the stairs quietly, and listening to the voices coming up from the empty bar below. On that floor, Mum also told me that there were mirrors lining the hallway leading into the bathroom. She just says that at night, when she had to cross that hall, she would get a strange feeling. 
and would never look into any reflections. The pub was bombed during the Blitz, which blew up the entire public bar, and unfortunately, everyone in it. The floor had collapsed, taking everything and everyone with it, into part of the basement. This was all rebuilt soon after, and as you might expect, the basement continued to be used for the storage of kegs and barrels. There was, however, one area that no one liked to go into, and that it was separate from the rest of the basement, and it was always a few degrees colder. The huge Doberman that my grandparents owned wouldn't go near the room, and would actively resist being taken near it. Of course, this was the part of the basement where the bombing had hit. Finally, there was the attic floor, which I believe was fairly open, and used mainly for the storage of furniture. This was above where my mother slept, and she said that countless times, she would hear the unmistakable sound of tables being dragged across the floorboards. Probably most interestingly, when she met my father in her late teens, she still lived in the pub, and my dad was a policeman. When the noises would start up in the attic space, he would often go to investigate them looking for intruders. He says that sometimes, in all earnest, he would go fully believing that someone was there, and he was about to apprehend a burglar, but he never found anyone. When I was nine, my dad started drinking heavily, and turned to drugs. His addiction continued into my preteens and my teens. The house's energy changed and became dark. Doors started slamming shut, and you'd always hear someone pacing in the hallways. You would hear a phone ringing, but we didn't have a home phone. It was not a smart slash flip phone ringtone. The scariest thing that happened in the house was that one night, I laid in my bed and I felt my blanket slowly move down my body. So I tugged it back, and there was resistance on the other end. Then I heard someone crawling to my door. My mother's worst experience in the house was when she saw the figure. She woke up one morning, while I was ill, to go get something at a gas station. As she came out of her room, she saw someone walk down the stairs. She yelled my name, and asked if I felt better. She followed until it disappeared around a corner. When she was at the gas station, she smelt something behind her, and yelled for it to leave her alone. When my parents divorced, my mum and I were left to pack and move the house ourselves. The last day we were there, as we backed out of the driveway, we saw a figure in the window, waving. Turns out, there's a theory that if a teenage girl while going through puberty has a major emotional events that continuously happen, especially if it gets with her dad, her energy can peel off and create an entity. And whenever the bad flares up, the entity will feed off the energy. My best friend lost her significant other at a fairly young age. It was a shock to everyone, and just horrible. They were very much in love, and had a happy marriage. I temporarily moved in with her shortly after his passing. During the few months that I lived there, she often went out of town to visit family, while on long-term leave from home. I would pet sit their animals when she was away, and they had one dog and three cats together. Their dog was like their child. My bedroom had two thin beds that were her significant other's childhood beds. Her dogs would sleep with me, and my little dog in my bed, even though it was crowded. Now several things happened that I knew were as a result of him letting us know he was there during the time. Some are so unbelievable, I don't dare share them. I don't need validation for what I experienced, but I think some may find comfort in this particular incident. I was asleep one night, after working a double as a waitress, 
very tired. I woke up and saw a blinding white light in the shape of a ball over the other twin bed as their dog was just staring at. It was about the size of an exercise ball, but brighter towards the middle. I was terrified. I screamed the dog's name so loud it hurt my throat and squeezed my eyes shut. I hid under the covers and fell asleep. Some of these experiences I kept to myself because my friend was getting upset that these things were happening to me, not her. For whatever reason, he used me to tell her he was with her. She's since met someone else and gotten engaged. I've never felt anything again once I moved out of the house. She lives somewhere else now, and we don't talk about what happened during those few months that I lived there. This is my abuela's story. When she had her first son, my uncle, she would often either be home alone or have her mother come over for the day to help around the house. Well, one day, my abuela's telling me that she and her mother were sitting in the kitchen while my uncle was in his room napping in the crib. The way the kitchen is set up, they can see into the hallway and thus see my uncle's bedroom door as left ajar. She said that all of a sudden, this little human man darts out from under my uncle's room and disappears down the hallway. My abuela and her mother both freaked out and ran to check on my uncle, but he was sound asleep. She insists that it looked like a human man, just the size of a leprechaun or a goblin. She speculates it may have been a duende. I live in a dense part of town, near what we call the town centre. There are big, well-lit streets, lots of businesses, lots of lights, a mall, a large hospital, a nice suburban area tucked behind it all. So it's not spooky to drive or even walk at at night. And I often take late night drives to do grocery shopping at a place that's open almost 24 seven. No lines, great deli. As I'm driving, like I mentioned, the area is well lit at night. I get a good look at her early twenties, long brown hair, wearing a kind of smart Burberry scarf and a tan sweater tight, dark pants, brown boots. And I remember thinking she looked a bit too well dressed to be walking down that particular part of the city street at 11 PM. But whatever, maybe she drank too much at one of those many restaurants or comedy clubs about 20 minutes away and decided to brave the walk home. I've done it myself. As I pass, she looks up right at me and we make eye contact. About 10 minutes later, I reach the grocery store in question. I walk up to the entrance and retrieve a basket. I notice someone exiting, so I move to the side to let them pass. I look up and it's the same woman. She glances at me and grins, but keeps walking. I stood there dumbfounded as she rounds the corner out of sight. I took a few steps into the store responded to the greeting of a passing worker without really having processed what they said, then decided to quickly walk back outside and see where she went. Despite the parking lot being very large and well lit, and the only cars being mine, and the other two that were there when I arrived, no one was there. It couldn't have been another woman that looked remarkably similar and had exactly the same clothes on. That's how I feel about it anyway. But it was a weird as hell experience nonetheless. This was about 10 years ago now. I lived in an apartment with my then four year old daughter, just the two of us. Odd things would happen pretty frequently. I would clean the downstairs. I cleaned very thoroughly, go upstairs and come back down and things like boxes of wine markers were on the counter. Light switches in my room would turn on and off. So much in fact, I changed to a fluorescent tube light into a plug. 
picture a shop light with a chain pull that started doing the same thing. Not the light flickering, the chain would be pulled. And in the winter, when the windows were all plastic sealed, my door would slowly open all the way as I watched. We had baseboard heat, and once I came downstairs after preheating the oven, to the oven door being wide open. This was spring loaded, and it wouldn't have just fallen open, nor did I open it. Not all that into hauntings prior to this, but I just chalked it up to a non threatening entity, because not too much happened I couldn't explain. This stuff would happen when it was just me in the house without the kiddo, sober as a jaybird. One day, I tried to take pictures with a digital camera to see if I could capture anything. I take a few pics, nothing off. Then as I turn towards the bathroom, half of the picture is jet black. Third, I face towards my bathroom fully, and the camera dies, fully charged, and it takes a few elsewhere, and it's working fine. Then I point it towards the toilet again, camera dies. While we're there, my daughter had pretty frequent nightmares, and kind of half woke up from them. She sleeps like a bear, so I didn't really think much of it. The night I took those pictures, she had a really bad one. After about 10 minutes of half sleep, I come to get her, and she said her back hurts where the man scratched it. And she has full length footed pyjamas, which I removed to check and she's got scratches on several parts of her back, places that would be incredibly difficult to reach, and nothing in her bed. She goes on to tell me that a tall man with hot hands put his hand on her back and told her to look at all the others, which she said there were lots of. We were out of there within a month. I've never felt more terrified and helpless. I was super poor at the time, but we spent a few weeks at my brother's until I found something else. To this day, when I brought my house, it was only out of sheer embarrassment I didn't have a medium check the place first. We'd never had anything like that happen afterwards, but I swear up and down that it was more than just a contrived coincidence. I worked at the Cliff Hotel in Colorado as a housekeeper and it was very haunted. Guests would complain about tapping sounds and feeling like they were being watched and had to move rooms every once in a while. The hotel was actually the second hotel built there. The first one burnt down in the 80s. The hotel was built on the base of Spikes Peak and a lot of very famous prominent people stayed there in the 1800s. At the time, the area was a very busy hub. There was a lot of paranormal stuff that happened to me directly, and also other staff as well. The first day I started, my boss Rosa told me that the last two housekeepers that worked the sixth floor had quit, and one right before me said she was pushed to the ground by a ghost and quit on the spot. Rosa also told me that I had to be strong with the ghosts, and I was working on the sixth floor, and that there was one housekeeper per floor, and six floors. The sixth floor were all suites, and they were all really cool and luxurious. I loved being in the rooms, and always felt different spirits, and they didn't scare or upset me. The one time I was freaked out, I felt a spirit was mad at me, when I had the TV on. As I always listened to the radio or CDs, guests would leave, and when I turned the TV off, it subsided. Another room always had the radio on when you entered. We would sweep the rooms at least twice to get any tips or gifts the valet would try to sneak in and steal our tips the second sweep to just clean the room. The radio was on several times in the morning, and I would shut it off after I cleaned the room, and then it would be on again. This was the only room on my floor that would constantly be trashed by people. They'd smoke in there and leave messages not like in any other rooms. This story happened 
when I was working there for a few months. I went home and took a nap. Cleaning rooms is exhausting. And after, I slowly opened my eyes. I saw the outline of the bottom half of a person. I slept on a futon mattress, so I was looking pretty close to the floor. I knew it wasn't human right away. You could see the little legs like they were hazy, and it clicked that it was an old man from the hotel. I could see him, but not see him at the same time. I was a little scared, and probably purposefully didn't try to look at the face, but I said very sternly to go home, and he was gone. I've seen ghosts a couple of times, and it's usually on the edge of waking and sleeping. I think that's because the mind doesn't panic when drowsy, and you're more in a dreamscape when you normally wouldn't be so sensitive to something that is essentially air. I work at a nursing home. We would hear door slams in the back hallway. We would check the rooms, and everyone who could walk were in their beds. And given limited mobility of these people, there is no way they could have made it to their beds in time. All of our linen rooms and trash rooms were locked with a code. And every time we heard this mysterious door slamming, someone would be dead in 24 hours. There was also a time where we had this combative old woman with dementia. She would scratch and pull at the workers and just scream for hours on end. When she died, no one had opened the windows and we heard her screams for three more weeks. And come to think of it, I don't know if there's a word for it, but some people seem to really be good at sensing when the end is coming. We had this one aide that looked at one of the patients. Vitals were fine, she was eating and everything looked okay. She wasn't even that old, maybe in the early 70s. And the aide comes and says, you might want to come and see her before you leave. I don't think she'll be here tomorrow. I saw her and she looked fine. She was found dead at 8am, an hour after we left. The aide later told me that sometimes she feels a strong urge to go into someone's room, when she normally wouldn't, and that's when she finds them dead. One time when I was a kid, I was sleeping in my bed, but my dog Coda wanted out really bad. So I opened the door and left it cracked for when he wanted to come back in. I was laying there trying to fall back asleep, but I noticed the door had opened all the way now because the hall light was on and it was distracting. I assumed it was my dog coming back in, so I didn't think anything of it, but he was a big dog. So you can imagine that when a big dog jumps on a bed, it's pretty noticeable. But whatever got on my bed was super quiet and light, and I suddenly felt a cold chill. I was facing the wall, and starting with a blank expression, because I had no idea what was going on. I knew my dog wasn't in the room, because I just knew. I always had my dog sleep with me. After I heard some quiet breathing, I decided to get up and leave. I didn't even look back. I just practically ran out of there and to the opposite end of the house, where my mum's room was. I knocked on her door and told her there was something in my room, and she pulled me inside and locked her door, and we proceeded to fall asleep about 30 minutes later. Later that day after I woke up, I felt chills as I walked back down towards my bedroom. I was afraid that whatever it was was still there. As I walked back to my room, I passed the living room, and noticed that the front door was cracked open. That freaked me out even more. Whatever it was, it never happened again in that house. But I still think about that night, and I try to understand what exactly happened, and what it could have been. My parents' place is big, old and haunted. Probably an overly dramatic start, but it is what it is. The sort of thing which have been reported there involve 
my brother seeing our deceased grandfather sitting on his grandfather's chair. My father having the blankets on his bed grabbed and vigorously shaken. My mother hearing what sounded like someone walking up and down the front porch, and then going out, then snapping some pics. Having some come out, a fogged up pillar shape. It could even be humanoid, but I'm not really sure. And I saw a figure one time, and what I thought was another dog, and felt the presence of others on a few other occasions. The story whereby I saw someone is that I was 10 and playing on the lawn with our new puppy. When I look up to the back porch and saw a dude in a very nice tan slash yellow suit standing in the front of what would have been a doorway back when the building served as a hotel. Just standing there casually watching. I didn't recognize him. Looked down to our puppy, looked up again, and he wasn't there. Another time about a decade later, I was just chilling in the lounge watching TV, when I felt like my father had walked up and stopped to see what was going on. It was a large, open plan room, so it wasn't uncommon for him to stop in the area just behind the seating, which is where we used to divide the area. I was just like, yeah, not much on, as I flicked through the channels for him, and after a moment there was no response. I looked around and was genuinely surprised to be alone in the room. I'm with one of my mates and two girls at the local where one night in an outback town in Australia. I'm in the driver's seat, my mate is in the passenger seat, and the two girls are in the back. All the passengers are drinking, not me, and talking bullshit and about everything and nothing. I'm telling a story to my mate in the front seat about a past event, and the two girls in the back are talking louder and louder. So I'm talking louder in order for my mate to hear. I turn and look at him as he's talking, because it seems like he's not paying attention, and he's looking at me strangely. I ask him what's wrong. He looks at me and asks, why are you shouting? I tell him the girls are speaking really loudly. He says, they aren't talking. Can you really hear that too? I say, hear what? And look back into the back seat. I still hear the distinct sound of women chatting and laughing, but I can see the two girls in the back weren't moving their mouths. Their eyes were looking at me in the same strange way as my mate. I can only describe the look as a mixture of fear and wonder. I then realize I can't understand what the women are talking about. They're speaking a different language I don't understand. I look back to my mate with a look of terror and say, yeah, I can hear women talking. Do you? He goes, holy shit, you hear that too? Yup. Drive, just drive, he said. I start the car and drive. The road is just a two tire track with branches off to multiple tracks and my mate is directing me where to go. I'm doing 60 through the scrubs, breaking off small branches and darting down tracks at the last second, trusting in only the directions I was given. The voices fade as we reach the main road. We put our seatbelts on and I ask, what the hell was that? My mate tells me that it was the sacred site where the women of local Aboriginal tribes would gather while the men did their secret men business on the other side of the river. We were always told there were spirits there, but I always thought it was bullshit until tonight. I didn't mention this before, but I was the only white guy in the car. The others were Aboriginals. My mate went on to apologize and tells me that he should not have taken me there. The voices were telling him to get out of there before something bad happened. My family has a very old cottage in the mountains where I like to spend time every summer. Last summer, something really scary happened. Evening, fast midnight. I'm downstairs in my room and I'm reading a book. My grandparents are upstairs. They are probably sleeping. Like I said, this cottage is very old 
and has thin walls, so sometimes you can hear what you really don't want to hear. For example, my grandparents wake up often through the night because they need to pee, but when they go to the bathroom, the whole cottage shakes, especially when they're on the stairs. Everyone else hears their steps. So I'm in my bed, reading my book, when I suddenly hear some weird noises upstairs, near the staircase. First one short shaking, and then steps. But which steps? It sounds like kid steps without shoes. And what is the most scary? They stop in the middle of the staircase, then nothing. I'm so scared at the moment that I hide under the blanket and try and fall asleep, because I'm downstairs and alone. But next morning, my grandparents asked me what I was doing at midnight on the stairs. They both woke up, because they heard the same thing, but saw no one. Well, it's not the first weird thing I've witnessed, so I'm starting to believe that we have a very scary cottage. I personally do not believe in the paranormal, but some of the experiences I've had at my dad's house as a teenager sometimes make me think otherwise. My whole family experienced plenty of strange happenings at this place, but the most jarring occurred when I was 17 years old. I rarely visited my dad's, but whenever I did make that hour-long trip, into the nothingness of Wisconsin, I was always uneasy of what I might see or hear at night. The house had some very unique features that always struck me as strange, the most notable being a crawl space in my bedroom that connected to my sister's bedroom adjacent to mine. Both sides of this crawl space were fitted with a small door. We never really knew what the purpose of the tunnel was as it was far too small to use for storage, and even too cramped for a grown adult to comfortably navigate. Anyway, this particular night when I went to bed, I heard some very strange noises, almost like a faint whisper or crying. I didn't think much of this, because it wasn't uncommon for coyotes to come by the house at night, looking to prey on our poor barn cats. The night went on, and the noises came and went. Struggling to sleep, I went downstairs to grab a glass of water from the kitchen. When I came back up into my room, I noticed that the door to the crawl space was now ajar, and the whimpering had stopped. More than a little startled at this point, I quickly got back into bed, and tried my best to fall asleep. Eventually I was able to fall back asleep, but was later awakened when I felt a sinking feeling at the foot of my bed. I assumed I must have left my bedroom door cracked, and one of the house cats had climbed on. I closed my eyes, and tried to fall back asleep, and was forced awake by the sound of a slamming door. I opened my eyes, and noticed that the door to the crawl space had been slammed shut. Then I quickly glanced at the foot of my bed, and saw the outline of a large figure staring at me. The figure was all black, with bright white eyes. I got out of bed as fast as I could and ran downstairs, and spent the rest of the night awake on the couch. I still don't know what I saw, or if it was even real. I was ready to chalk it all up to sleep paralysis, but my sister told me next morning that she was also awoken by the sound of the cruel space door slamming and that was one of the last times I spent the night there. And if that wasn't bad enough, five years later, my dad and stepmom decided to add an extension to the house, and when they were digging in the foundations, they uncovered gravestones from the 1800s. No thank you. When I was 16, I woke up on a Wednesday night at around 2am and there was a ghostly figure, walking up the middle of my bedroom floor. I froze, and reached for the light on my bedside locker, but it wouldn't switch on. So as a coping mechanism, I decided the only thing I could do, was to hide under the duvet, 
and hope it all went away. After about ten minutes, I peek out and notice the light is now on. The room is empty, and I manage not to urinate on the sheets, which is always a good thing. The female that was in my room was dressed in black, and I could see the outline of her face. She spoke softly, saying, don't mind me. That didn't settle me in any way. In fact, I think it made it worse. Fast forward to Saturday night. I had friends over, and I had a new phone, which about the time was pretty cool, because it had a camera on it. We were taking pictures and messing about, and two days later, I noticed in one of the photos that this lady was sitting at a chair at my kitchen table, right behind where my friend was sitting. I freaked out. It was her, and I thought I was losing my mind. For about a week after this, I noticed strange things in the house, like the cupboards in the kitchen all being open when I walked into it, the front door being unlocked when I knew I locked it. I had terrible nightmares for weeks as well. I finally bolted it and told my parents what was happening. Once I had told my parents everything and showed them the photo, they took me to our parish priest, who to my surprise immediately came to our house with us. He opened the front and back doors, said prayers and blessed the house, and said a few words. An interesting thing he said was about the area I live in. He said he'd seen so many strange and frightening things on the hill, which he can't speak about, but claimed what happened to me to be minor compared to other things he had endured. I asked more questions, until he finally told me what had been happening and why. We live on a mountainside, above a small town, which has become very built up with houses and activity. About three miles from this group of houses, there is a castle about 3,000 years old, which is notorious for hauntings and cruel history. I was informed that anyone killed in the castle would have been buried over the land where my house is, and that a lot of activity and lost souls are in the area. The hill I live on is called the Bridal Lonan, which is based in Warren Point County, down in Northern Ireland. The castle is called Narrow Water Castle, Feel free to look into the history, and as to why the hill has its name. For the stories, I have heard the hill is called Bridal Lonan, because while trying to get away on horseback from the castle with his new bride, a knight had his head severed off, and the bride was able to still guide the horse along the hill, hence the Bridal Lonan. Hope you enjoyed this. I've had plenty of other creepy encounters as well. This happened when I was about six. I lived in this isolated house, so there was pretty much no one else around for miles. We had a car garage, and me, my sister and cousin, were playing at night at around 10. At one point, me and my sister were trying to hop on my cousin's back, since he was the tallest, and we all ended up facing the garage wall. At this point, I felt like someone was watching me, so I turned, and I kid you not, there was a transparent looking man standing in front of our house just staring at me. I froze and stared back, to make sure what I was seeing was real. We eye locked for at least four seconds, which felt like an eternity. My plan was to keep an eye on him, until the others also turned to confirm what I was looking at. But at this point, I couldn't hear my sister laughing or my cousin. It was so quiet. I kept calling my cousin's name, but didn't hear any reply. I thought they were dead. I freaked out, lost my eye contact with the ghost, screamed my cousin's name again, and all of a sudden I could hear them laughing. I turned back. He was gone. I cried telling my cousin to go back to the house, and that it wasn't safe. All he did was giggle. I told my mum about it this year, and she said, we had two different maids that lived in the guest house who started screaming in the middle of the night because they saw this ghost looking man. I don't know what to say. 
I'm afraid of ghosts, and thank God I left that house. I've had so many strange experiences with that place. My cousins and I were playing in my grandmother's yard one summer. She had stopped using her front door years before. The screen door was permanently sealed, and a large cabinet blocked the door from the inside. We saw a guy in full suit with a briefcase, walking to the front door, and we all called to him to come to the side door. He ignores us, pushes the broken doorbell and stands there. One of my cousins runs in through the side door and tells my grandmother she has a guest. Meanwhile, we're all watching Suit Guy respond as though talking to someone inside, then smiled, opened the screen door and walked in. Now we've never ever seen that door used, but we rush up onto the porch and look in through the door. It's still sealed, cabinet in place. Beyond we see my cousin talking to my grandmother and yelling asking where the man was. They say no one came in. My uncle later told us there was a guy posing as a door-to-door -door salesman who assaulted women in that area in the early 50s. When I was about three or four, a friend of the family brought his daughter over to play with me. We were playing with some pipes that were leaning against a shed and these heavy metal pipes fell on her and she died right then and there. This part I remember clearly and it still messed me up to this day as I felt a tremendous guilt since I was the one suggesting to play where we did but I didn't understand that she had died and I asked her to play some more. I don't remember the following, but apparently I was playing outside months after the incident, and I came back into the house, ran into my room and told my mum, Kyla needs help. Her chest hurts. She can't breathe. My mum was stunned. Apparently she asked me what I meant, and I said, I was playing with her, and she told me her head hurts. To this day, my mom was convinced I had been playing with a ghost. Five years ago, my mother's gay best friend, basically her brother and my uncle, died from a drug overdose. At the time, him and my mom weren't on good terms, and they lived about an hour away from each other. He was always telling my mom if he died, he was going to come back and haunt her, jokingly, of course. Well, after he died and was cremated, weird stuff started happening all the time. Every time something would happen, we would just say, go home, Uncle David, you're drunk. And then it would stop. One night before we moved, a really weird incident took place. I remember waking up to the sound of something falling and the smoke alarm going off. Me and my stepdad had both rushed into the kitchen at the same time. There was no smoke. The pineapple that was on the top of the fridge was down on the floor and the stove burner was on. The fridge door was swinging open and all the cabinets were open. From behind my stepdad, I heard my mum call from her bedroom. Go home, David. You're drunk. And she laughed. Almost immediately after she had said that, the smoke alarm switched off. The fridge door stopped swinging and me and my stepdad just looked at each other and started closing everything. When I was little, I lived in a trailer in my hometown of Bluffton, Ohio, with my mum, stepdad, dog and cat. I had my friend Kathleen staying the night, since it was one of the last times I would spend time with her before she moved. It was an unusually quiet summer night. Now I remember this next part very well. My mum and stepdad were asleep in their room down at the far end of the trailer. My dog Cooper was asleep in his cage with the door open. And my cat Smokey was asleep on my stomach. Kathleen and I were still awake. And we just finished a movie. But we were on my pull-out couch. And suddenly the room got chilly. 
and we see three shadows being cast against the hallway wall. A cat, dog, and a human. All the doors in the trailers were closed, and the windows were covered. Kathleen grabbed my arm and whispered, Do you see that? I was in shock, but managed to squeak out, Yeah. We stared at the hallway longer, to see if we saw it again, but we didn't. Shortly after that, Kathleen moved away, but we still keep in touch. This happened several years ago. I've always liked the paranormal. Shows, movies, books and the like. Anyway, I think I may have been watching those shows before, and I had a sleep paralysis dream. It actually scared me, and I've had multiple ghosts and unexplainable things occur. Anyway, I'm sleeping, and I have this vivid dream that I'm a nurse from the 40s. You know, pin-up hair, dark red lipstick, everything is in black and white for some reason. So in my dream, there was this overweight woman killing her patients. They were old, and I guess she wanted them to suffer less. I don't know. I'm also dressed as a nurse, and watch her do this. It scares me, and her hauntingly green eyes pierce my soul. She wanted me to do that to one of the patients. While I refused, she came after me. I immediately woke up, and she was right above me when I awoke, and I couldn't move, and I just stared into her piercing green eyes. On another occasion, when I was a kid, I shared a bed with my sister. We had a mirror near the end of the room, so when you'd get out of bed, you'd see your reflection. It's late. I was woken up to something sitting in front of the mirror, and I'm thinking it's my sister. I vividly recall saying, what are you doing? It looked like she was brushing her hair, but it looked damaged or burnt. I was about to tap whatever it was on the shoulder, but immediately looked through the mirror. It was this burnt up skull with burnt hair. Whatever it was, cocked their head to the side, confused. My sister was in bed and said, what? while not opening her eyes. Whatever this figure was, was about a foot away from her and I, and I just jumped back into bed and closed my eyes hard. I moved into a larger house when I was in college, and the room I lived in was said to be haunted, according to all the other housemates and the people who had lived in that room before. I slept facing the closet and two girls slept facing the door in a loft bed type deal, with an upper and lower bed, kind of like a giant bunk bed. The girl on the bottom bunk woke us up by yelling, go away, go away, one night. We asked her what happened, and she told us a woman was standing over her bed, whispering to her before turning around and going into the closet. Screw that. But it sounded like a regular case of sleep paralysis right? Except the other girl and I experienced sleep paralysis in that room quite regularly. It was her first time experiencing something like that. But I had had it before, but never this often within such a short span of time. We brushed it off, assuming that sounds from the house disrupted our sleeping cycles, until I moved into the upper part of the loft. Mind you, this is a shitty Southern California town, and it would be hot up there. And there was no real airflow after I hung up tapestries for privacy around the border. I would feel someone brushing the back of my neck, or my arm or my leg, but only when I was alone in the room. I dismissed it, thinking it was my imagination, and I was in the room so rarely that it didn't even matter. One day though, I was laying in bed watching Netflix, and a bag of coloured pencils slowly slid off my desk, as if pulled by invisible strings. This bag was one at the centre of the desk. There was no fan on it, and it was far too heavy to be explained by a wing current. I heard the bag crinkling, and watched Frozen as it was pulled off the desk and onto the floor of the loft, where it deflated. Kind of like when you squish the air out of a sandwich bag. 
only there was no reason for the air to have been pushed out like that at all. It almost looked like someone was pressing on it. And then, I felt the arm brush feeling, and I noped out of that room really quickly, and spent the rest of the day in common spaces. After that, I was rarely alone in that room, and everyone teased me for being the girl afraid of ghosts. I've had several things happen to me. My first one was when I was around 9 or 10. I woke up and wanted to get some water when I saw this dark fog slash shadow figure with red eyes. They went from the hallway down to the kitchen and I followed it. It sort of disappeared like a gas little by little. This one is more recent. I had to pee really badly and ran upstairs while one of the bedroom doors was open. I passed by and thought I saw my brother for a quick second. I went to pee, then walked back and realized there was no way it could have been my brother. This man was large, like super large. He had a checkered plaid shirt and looked a bit like a lumberjack. This lasted for a split second, and this is important. Fast forward a few years and my brother is freaked out. He tells me he saw a huge man with a red flannel slash plaid shirt, and his height was staggering. He said he thought he saw him through the reflection of one of the mirrors in our house. He was so spooked, and I oddly enough was on the toilet when it happened. But when he described the man, I went pale. I'd never told anyone about this man. I had thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, but he described this man to a T. I guess we're living on different planes of existence and somehow glitches happen, or maybe he was a ghost. I was nine years old, and I was at a summer camp for kids, and I had to go to the bathroom. This camp was at a school, and the bathroom was kind of a long ways down the hall from where the camp was, so when I got to the bathroom it was super quiet. The bathroom was small, and I felt a little creeped out in there, because it was cold, and I was the only one in there. I started thinking about ghosts, and had a strange feeling that there could be someone watching me. Sure enough, right before I went into the stall, one of the other stall doors opened all by itself. There was nobody else in the bathroom, and I freaked the hell out, quickly did my business, and ran back to where my friends were and I could still feel a cold presence by me. It was summer, and the air conditioners weren't working right, so it obviously wasn't that. I never really believed in ghosts that much, until that day. I'm actually haunted. My family will attest to this, so I have quite a few stories. The favourite one, I ended up telling is when I lived in Los Angeles. We lived in what I like to call a half house. The address was 11800 half, and it was just basically a shack remodeled to be a house. I'll have to explain the layout, otherwise you just won't understand. The front door led to the small kitchen, with a window that faced the driveway, and opposite the window was a half wall to separate the living room. We used this as a bedroom, because the actual bedroom was always freezing cold and super tiny. It was just off the living room, and the bathroom. The bedroom was connected to what everyone called the garage. It only had two access points, one from the bedroom, and one from the outside by the driveway, just a few feet away from the kitchen window. Well, I am a crazy insomniac, always have been. So there I was laying in bed, staring at my ceiling, while the boyfriend was passed out drunk to my left and our kiddo was opposite him. Well, one night I started hearing footsteps on the roof, loud footsteps, but despite the flimsy material, it never shook our house. The house was long, not big, just long, but whoever this was, managed to run across my entire roof 
down the long way, in just a handful of steps, but always managing to stop right above our heads. I added this to my telling of the creepy crap that happened in the house to my boyfriend's family when we spent time with them in the weekends. My boyfriend always blew me off. No one believed my stories. After months of this, my boyfriend finally got tired of my stories and decided to piece me wrong. I told him he can't get drunk and that I'd wake him up when the stomping started. He agreed to have no drink that night. The stomping started, I woke him up and he heard it. He jumped up, threw his work boots on with his boxers and took my giant Rambo knife with him and ran outside. I locked the door behind him, waited and listened. Then I heard the stomping run from the living room, across the house and to the driveway. Our driveway was gravel, those stupid white rocks because my boyfriend thought they looked nice. All the way up and down the drive, so when you walked on them, it was a very distinct sound. The thing got to the kitchen side of the house, jumped off the roof, and I heard those rocks just out the kitchen window. I was too chicken to peek through the blinds, and a few minutes later, my boyfriend comes inside and says he didn't see anything except my cat, and that the cat was doing what he always does when he wants to be petted more. I told him the thing ran across and jumped onto the driveway, and that I heard the rocks. We never heard the stomping again, but other crazy shit started happening, and his family believed me after that. I wasn't old enough to remember, and it's not really my story, but I'll tell it anyway. So, it all started in my grandparents' original house, from before they divorced, that my mother grew up in. I was just a few months old, and had a baby monitor in my room. The house had a history of being unusual. Weird stuff happened on a not so frequent basis. Everyone knew that something was wrong with the house and most suspected the paranormal. So it's late at night. I can't remember for sure, but it was some time after eight and the baby monitor produces suspicious noises inexplicably. The sound of furniture moving loudly across the room emanates from it. The receiving monitor was only on the floor below the transmitter's room, yet the sound could only be heard from the monitor. Moving into my room to investigate, my mother opens the door and the room is unchanged. No furniture is out of place and I'm still sound asleep. Confused, my mother leaves and returns downstairs and after a few minutes, the sound is heard again. Furniture being moved. Upon investigation, nothing has changed. We still lived in the house for a few years after before moving. One day when I was 14, me and two of my friends, Melissa and Susie, were hanging out at Melissa's house, which was a typical 1950s bungalow on your typical small town USA street. Uneventful summer day, three bored girls, nothing strange. No known history in the house. Nobody telling ghost stories or psyching each other up. It was at this time, Susie had the idea of getting a mirror and trying the old Bloody Mary trick. I can recall thinking this was the most ridiculous thing ever. I mean, a Ouija board maybe but Bloody Mary is just plain stupid. So after I scoffed, Melissa suggested that we repeat the name of her recently deceased grandmother. I thought it was still dumb, but maybe better than summoning a long dead English queen. So we grabbed a hand mirror from the pile in Melissa's closet and turned off the light. Trying to be serious, I hold the mirror and Melissa and Susie flank me on either side as we proceed to repeat the name of Melissa's great grandmother. After about 10 or so repeats, I start noticing something like smoke entering the mirror from the lower right corner. I don't say anything because at first I'm in semi disbelief. The small ball of smoke then starts to spread like tendril forms, filling the mirror and seeming to take form. At this point, everyone screams simultaneously 
and I toss the mirror, and we proceed to scramble out of the closet and describe the exact same phenomenon using our own words. Melissa and I described it looking like cigarette smoke. Susie described it like fog. We were in shock to say the least, because I think we all expected nothing to happen. The rest of the day was spent in semi-silence. I still think it's crazy, and wonder if it is possible that it was some kind of group psychosis or the power of suggestion, or one of us projecting our own imagination into the others. But that is all equally nuts too, especially the group psychosis stuff, because we all saw it at the same time, without suggesting it to the other. I know what I saw, and it was something I don't want to ever see again. When I was 13, my mother, sister and I participated in the AIDS walk in New York. My grandfather, my mother's dad, died of AIDS when my mum was my age. It was a very emotional day for my mum. She was grateful to have my sister and I with her. For a week after that, I felt super paranoid in the apartment. It was so weird, like something was there but we didn't know it was. So I had this feeling for about a week before it happened. I've always randomly woken up in the middle of the night. So when I woke up one night, I didn't think much of it. I look over the door, and there's a figure standing right in front of it. I remember everything, so vividly, like it happened last night. It was clearly a man. He was tall, white, wearing an orange shirt and blue pants. I just knew it was my grandfather. I laid there staring, not knowing what to do. I was scared, but almost excited. He was there. This was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before with the paranormal. It felt like forever before he just faded. I was certain he went into my mother's room to see her too. I told my mum about it the next day. But she just wrote me off as me dreaming. But he was there. And I know that I saw him. Back in the late 80s, I was about five years old and lived on a large Navy base in California. My friend and I went outside in the morning to play. It was a sunny day. And we parked our bikes and climbed a small embankment to the playground. As we approached, we saw what looked like the shadow of a man, only white, pushing the merry-go-round extremely fast, faster than a person can run. No one else was around that early. We got scared and got back onto our bikes and went about two blocks down the street to her house. As we pulled into her drive, we looked over to see the white man running past the road. It had no facial features or details, it was just fast, completely white, and did not look three-dimensional. We both saw it, but nobody believed us. Neither of us ever saw it again, and I lost contact with her a few years after. But I wonder if she still remembers what we saw. When I was in 10th grade, my history class was researching the Great Depression and Prohibition. So we took a field trip to this old brewery that Al Capone used to visit. Anyway, me and my buddy Cooper enter an office, small, with a photo of the old owner of the brewery above the fireplace. Desk and lamp in the corner, and we walk in and stand behind the desk facing the photo with the lamp behind us. He looks up and says, Shit, that bastard was ugly. But with the money he was bringing, I'd screw him too. We laugh it off, and we start looking at the desk. I remember the desk looked a lot older than the office. Not glossy, just like a wooden desk that some carpenters threw together in the late 1800s. Next thing I know, I snap out of my day's desk-admiring state, and Cooper's beside me. I'd say he was whispering, but I could feel the fear in his tone. It wasn't whispering, because I knew he was trying to speak louder. He just couldn't. 
he just said, Dude, do you hear that? I listen up and feel the floorboards around my feet moving and the sound of metal rocking. I spin around and see the old lamp shaking back and forth. To this day, me and Cooper haven't spoken about it. We refuse to bring it up. I brought it up once at a bonfire over a few beers, and he said never to speak of it. I'm pretty sure it was a ghost. The way the antique moved was unnatural. My family had this get-together. In a rented villa, at this famous tourism hotspot up a hill. We were having cookouts in the backyard, and the sun had just set. So there was still a bit of light, but the sky was dark. There were two layers of backyard. The first one was attached to the kitchen, where my mum and aunt had done most of the cooking. The second layer of the backyard was the very back part, and the villa was surrounded by a fence and then dense bushes and trees behind it. It looked beautiful in the daytime, when it's bright, but at night it was dark and eerie to even look. I was like nine or ten when this happened. I was in the first layer of the backyard, helping my mum with the cookout, when I saw a woman with long black hair and a long plain white sleeping gown turn her back onto me. She was standing between the bushes and leaning on one of the trees. I thought it was my aunt for some reason, because she did have long black hair, and I remember she was wearing a white sleeping gown too. I tugged on my mum's shirt and went, Mum, look, what is auntie doing? My mum didn't say a word, and I continued to call out to the woman. Auntie, what are you doing? My mum dragged me into the dining room where my aunt was. Her long hair was in a bun, and she was wearing a white floral dress, not a plain one. I was like, yep, and my family talked about it for the rest of the night. No one knew who she was. My dad had a sister who died of cancer when he was a teenager. Her name, Betty. My dad was a very private person who very rarely spoke of his younger life. When my oldest sister was about four or five, and I was barely walking, and our other sister hadn't been born yet, we lived in an old farmhouse with a long hallway, separating the kid bedrooms from my parents' bedrooms. My dad heard my sister laughing and talking outside his door late one night. He goes to check on her, to get her back to bed, and to get her to stop giggling, as he has to go and work in the morning. When she saw him, she says, Teddy, Betty's here to talk to you. But when he looked, there wasn't anyone there. He'd never mentioned Betty before to his toddler. And it's not like he and my mother discussed his dead sister a whole lot, so it was doubtful that she would have heard the name before. Betty came back when my mum was pregnant with my younger sister. According to my mum, she saw a woman in a hospital gown rise out of the floor and say, don't name the child Elizabeth, and disappear. My mum did not name the child Elizabeth. Crazy pregnancy dream inspired by the oldest sister sighting almost 10 years prior? Maybe. About 10 years ago, my mum and I went to stay with her cousin in DC. Her cousin was a pastor at a very, very old church in Georgetown that had one of those houses behind the church that the pastor lived in. I was offered one of two rooms, the attic or the room on the floor with the rest of the bedrooms. I picked the latter. My mum got the attic. The first night, she said she woke up with incredible pressure on her chest, like someone was pushing down on her chest with all their weight. She got up and went to the bathroom for a glass of water and went back to sleep. How do you get back to sleep after that? Anyway, later she woke up with the undeniable feeling that someone was staring at her. The next day, she tells all of us this over breakfast and my mum's cousin just goes, oh yeah, it's an old house and dozens have died here. Crazy. 
I slept like shit for the next few nights, and woke up wide-eyed at every creak in the house, which happened constantly. I had a strange experience when I was a little kid. I couldn't have been older than six or seven. We had a swing in our backyard at the time, well on the other side of the yard. Our yard bordered an old house that had long been abandoned and probably should have been torn down since it was dilapidated and a huge empty field. My friends, all a few years older than me, would tease me that the house was haunted and that a ghost would come out and kill me. I was a gullible little kid. So while I said no way, their teases stuck in my head. What if there is a ghost there? So anyway, I loved this swing, and I was always on it. It was a way for me to play pretend, as I had an overactive imagination, and outside of my few older friends I was pretty lonely, and I'd blabber on about whatever I thought of. This one particular time, it was at night, and we had the back porch light on since it was pitch black. The light didn't really reach the swing, but as long as I could see the light, it was good in my mind. So I was going on about whatever I was doing, and remember saying something like, I was talking to a friend my age, and I for some reason said out loud, Hello! And that's when I heard a loud whisper, Hi! It sounded like it was next to me, and when I looked to where it came from, it was in the direction of the damn house. I ran, perhaps faster than I ever had back to my house, slammed the door shut once inside, and went to my room. My parents didn't even notice how I came in. I never told them, because I know my dad would have flipped out, and gone to see who could have possibly talked to me. And I didn't want anything to happen to him. Looking back, I probably should have, because Lord knows what was there. This wasn't me just hearing an imaginary high. It was very real. Reasonably, it was probably some homeless guy or other neighbourhood kid. The town I grew up in was pretty rough after all, as it was a lot in the Inland Empire back in the 90s. And there was your fair share of drug addicts who'd moved through the area, as well as a lot of young kids you'd hear about being found by the cops hanging out in people's backyards drinking. The one thing I'm sure of though, was that it wasn't my friends, because they would have never let me hear the end of it, if they saw how fast I ran. I'm still friends with one of them, and I remember bringing it up to him when we were both adults. He shook his head and said, No way man, that house scared us too, and we heard creepy things. Where do you think the stories came from? I'm not sure now. Perhaps it could have been something I couldn't explain. When I was a kid, my parents would find my room with the lights on, and the door open after every night. They questioned me about it, and I said the woman who visits me at night does that. Confused, they had me describe the woman, and decided that it sounded like my great-grandma, who was dead. They didn't know what to do. They tried moving me to a different room, and the same thing happened in my old room. Eventually, they ended up replacing all the furniture in my room. The bed, the desk, the bedside table. But it was only when we got rid of the dresser that it finally stopped. The dresser had belonged to my great-grandma before she passed. At a friend's house, which is older and not well maintained, there was a very large staircase to the basement slash rec room. That had a curve at the bottom, and rickety steps. On my second step down, my sock slid right off the step, and started to fall down this long curvy wooden staircase. As I'm falling, I'm physically feeling myself being lifted off the steps, like there are hands picking me up, and I'm actually floating down. When I open my eyes, I'm laying on the ground on my back. No pain. Didn't even feel anything except this weird sensation of having hovered over every single step around the curve and placed on the ground. 
friends didn't hear a thing, because no noise was made. I am certain someone or something was looking out for me that day. I am an EMT, and I worked at this retirement facility during the night shift. The third floor was haunted as hell. On one of my shifts, I walked past this door and it was slightly ajar. The room had been recently vacated due to the passing of one of the residents. I thought nothing of it. Someone must have been through to clear out the recently deceased's belongings. I locked the door and resumed my patrol. Next hour, the door is open again. I'm thinking to myself, what the hell? I'm sure I locked this door. I walk inside, look around, and make sure no one is present. I make sure that I deliberately lock the door. That following hour, the door is open again. The hairs stand up on the back of my neck. I don't even bother going inside the apartment at this point. I lock it and move on. Now on the opposing side of the building, there is this chapel. The lights of the chapel are always turned off at 6pm every night, and the crucifix that is a plug-in is always unplugged at the same time. On my previous two rounds, the chapel was dark. This round, however, the only crucifix was a light. Screw that. I left the third floor and never to return. I didn't actually go back to that job because of that night, and I legitimately get chills whenever I recount this story. A couple of years ago, I was leaving my sister-in-law home. She still lived with her parents at the time. Their house is about 20 minutes away from mine. It was about 11pm, and though it's a main road between two towns, it was pretty quiet. About three quarters of the way there, we came to a part of the road that has a gradual hill that ends at a bend. The road isn't that well lit, and up ahead I can see the lights of another car approaching, so I dipped my headlights and it continued towards us. As it got closer, I suddenly realised that it was half to three quarters of the way across the line on my side of the road. I always imagined in those sort of situations, I would just swerve out of the way into the hard shoulder. But for some reason, I froze as it continued to come close at speed. When it was almost directly in front of me, I braced myself for impact. The lights came right up to my side of the car. But when it should have hit, they seemed to disappear. Heart racing, I somehow had the sense to look back in the rearview mirror where I observed the red taillights glowing for a second, before everything going dark on the road again. To this day I don't know what happened, but I'm glad I had a witness with me, my sister-in-law, because otherwise I'm sure I would have convinced myself that I was just imagining things. The road is commonly driven, at fast speeds, and as such, there have been a lot of accidents over the years. When I told my wife about it, she said that a guy from where they lived, her parents, had died there a few years before that, after getting out to push his car that had broken down and been crushed by a car that came from behind and didn't see them until it was too late. Like I say, I can't explain what happened, but it still freaks me out a little to even think about this now. I have a few stories from figures at my bedroom door and in my bathtub to footsteps of the deceased. But the one that sticks out is the one that almost made me break down. I was in San Angelo and the adults went drinking because every five or so years when dad comes home, it's party time. I was underage, so I got to babysit the sweetest three-year-old boy, Timmy, and the one-year-old, Jordan. Jordan was asleep, and me and Timmy were sitting out back on the porch, swing, talking. Suddenly, he starts crying and points to the back door, which was wide open. Now, San Angelo is a very small place, the kind of place where you leave all your doors open. No big deal. 
But when Timmy said, in broken toddler speak, that someone was walking through the back door, I started to freak out. He took me by the hand and went inside. He walked me all the way to Jordan's room and just broke out into a terrible fit, saying in toddler speak, Grandma, Grandma. Later, when the adults came home, they told me that Jordan's room and Timmy's hair smelt just like their recently deceased grandma. Apparently, Timmy had barely just started to realise she wasn't coming back, and I guess seeing her broke him down. My dad got a job in Charleston, and his boss put him up in his house. Apparently, the subdivision was built on old plantation lands. A lot of that city is thought to be haunted because of the slave trade. One time when he closed up the office, he felt someone was behind him. It got cold, and the hairs on the back of his head started to rise. He heard footsteps, and saw a shadow descend on him, and turned around ready to defend himself, but there was no one there. He said he didn't even lock the doors that night. Also, his air mattress used to deflate constantly, not from some hole, but because the cap was unscrewed each time. He even tried to tape it to no avail. Also, a friend of my parents had to have his house cleansed, because he would be fondled at night by something that wasn't there. He'd wake up with bruises and hand marks on his legs and privates. Pretty sure it was sexual in nature, which creeped him out even more. His wife corroborated the story with them, and after the cleansing and moving, they didn't have any problems anymore. Back in middle school, I was with my friend at his grandma's house. We were in the basement in his room. I was sitting on the bed, and he was sitting on the floor looking at the TV, playing Xbox. This was back when people still had home phones. This phone was one of those cordless ones. He had it on the headboard of his bed. It was one of those headboards that had a shelf. For some reason, it flew off the charging dock it was in and flew all the way across the other side of the room without anyone touching it. Me and him were the only two people in his tiny bedroom. No one believes us to this day. We still wonder how it happened. I always had a funny feeling at that house. It always gave me the creeps. A couple of years ago, my girlfriend and her sister Sydney and her father were out for dinner. My girlfriend mentioned that she had seen a ghost in their house the other day. We don't know if it actually is a ghost. And anyway, she said that she had been seeing the ghost for a few years now and always in the same spot, in the corner of the living room behind the TV. It is just a black figure, almost human-like, but not exactly, with gigantic yellow eyes that are wide open. It has no features except for a huge circular mouth with red lips surrounding it. This time, seeing the ghost had particularly scared her, because it was more in the centre of the living room than usual. Sydney looks up and says, Oh, that? I've seen that. I see it in the kitchen, though, and in the basement. It just stands perfectly still and watches me at night. Sydney then proceeds to tell us about the time when she was sleeping in her room. She woke up in the middle of the night, and when she opened her eyes, she saw her maths teacher standing in the corner of her room. She was so scared, all she could do was stare and wouldn't move. Eventually, the sun started coming up and she somehow fell asleep. When she woke up, her maths teacher was gone. The house used to be where a cult lived before they had moved in. I don't know much about the cult at all, but I do know that before they bought the house, all of the walls and ceilings were painted black, and I absolutely hated it there. My boyfriend lives in a Civil War era plantation on a huge farm. The place had a weird vibe to it. None of the animals will come upstairs. If you bring them up, 
They'll start shaking and dart back down. My boyfriend won't even go into one of the bedrooms. Slave shackles are still hanging up in the basement. The place has apparently been pretty dormant as far as paranormal activity goes for the past year. I've had a few odd experiences. My boyfriend says that it always gets more active around the holidays though. In November, right before Thanksgiving, I was staying the night with him. I was about to fall asleep and I heard something outside. At first, I thought it was the pack of coyotes that roam around the back of the farm. But then I heard it again, a few seconds after the first time. And it was definitely not a coyote. I immediately woke up and was aware of my surroundings and I heard it again. It was a woman outside calling for John. She sounded so panicked and distressed. I heard her call a few more times and I could hear the voice moving around the yard. I was creeped out, but I cuddled up to my boyfriend and went back to bed and told my boyfriend about it in the morning. He said that was a new one. Fast forward to exactly a month from my experience. I wake up and the first thing out of my boyfriend's mouth is, remember a few weeks ago when you heard a woman calling for someone? What name was it? John? I heard it last night. I set a reminder on my phone for the next month, but nothing happened. Really eerie. I've been trying to find the history of the house to see if a John lived there, but I find it quite challenging to do so. Every now and then, my friend would sleep over at his grandparents' house, just to spend a little bit of quality time with them throughout the busy school year. One night, my friend was having trouble sleeping, so he was in and out of sleep throughout the night. One night, he awoke in the middle of the night to see a chubby little child standing in the corner of the room, looking at him. At this point, he thought he was dreaming, or just seeing things, so went back to sleep, not really freaking out too much. Fast forward to about a week later, my friend has a family dinner, and his cousin is present. He approached his cousin to tell him the story about what he saw when he was at the grandparents' house. Following telling him this, his cousin started shaking a bit, and immediately asked him if he was screwing with him, and that it wasn't funny. My friend replied no, and asked why. His cousin saw the exact same thing as a kid, when he slept over at his grandparents' house months before, but thought it was just him seeing things. They both freaked out, teared up a little bit, and didn't finish dinner. Pretty much screwed with my head for a bit after hearing this. When I was 11, I lived in New York, but it was the last day before we moved. My brother and I shared a room, and we decided to have some friends over to spend the last night we were going to be living there. Later that night, we were laying in our bed. My brother and I also shared a bed, with our friends vertically, so that we could all fit. The TV was right in front of us, with the door cracked to the left of it. To the right was our toy bin filled with Nerf guns, and a window right above it. These are all important later in the story. Around 1 or 2 a.m., we heard a noise that's very difficult to describe from the hallway, outside the half-cracked door. The best way to describe it would be a loud mmm noise, with a sort of bass. It was like nothing any of us had ever heard before, and we could all tell there was something strange happening by the expressions on our faces. About 30 seconds later, the TV shut off, the door slammed, and the window shut. We had it open because the house was very hot, and all of this occurred at the same time. My brother instantly hid under his sleeping bag out of pure fear, and it was almost like he was in a state of shock. He was clenching his eyes shut, and wouldn't respond to any of us, no matter how much I shook him, and tried to get his eyes open. My first reaction was to go to him, because he was my older brother, 
and I was seriously freaked out. This is when people think my paranormal experience is fake, but I can't say I blame them. It sounds like something from a cheesy, scary movie. Anyway, we had a box of cookies beside our bed to snack on for our all-nighter. And I left an open package near my feet at the end of the bed because I was full. Soon we were being pelted by cookies. So I picked up a cookie that hit me in the blanket and bit into it. It tasted like an ordinary cookie. And soon we noticed it wasn't cookies being thrown anymore. It was the Nerf shotgun shells and new Nerf darts from our toy bin full of Nerf guns. These weren't thrown for long. The last thing thrown was the TV remote, which was aimed at me. It hit the blanket and I was holding my eyes shut because I was so scared. Eventually, one of our friends rolled off the bed and turned the light on and everything stopped instantly. We don't know who was throwing any of that stuff. Several things have happened to me, but there are two that really stick out both occurring in my current house. I was about 12 and had a dirty habit of not closing my closet door. My mom would say to me, you better close it. Grandma used to say things would enter if you don't. I brushed it off and never bothered to shut the door. One night, I had a sleepover with a bunch of friends and we were all sprawled around my room. I let my friends and cousin have my bed, and I was sleeping on a mattress that was against my room door, which was closed in the middle of the night. I woke up and saw a tall man into my closet. I thought it was my dad, until I realized that the position I was sleeping in didn't allow anyone else to enter my room, as the door could not be opened. The second story. I was a bit older this time, perhaps 15 or 16. It was after school, and I was lying on my bed doing some homework. I could see out of the corner of my eye that someone was standing at my door watching me. It wasn't just a shadow. I could literally see a person there. I looked up, and it was gone. Once again, I thought it was my dad, who was just come home early, and who'd been checking in on me. Not five seconds later, though, I heard a crashing coming from the kitchen. It sounded like all the pots and pans had just fallen onto the floor and they were being smashed around. When I arrived, everything was normal. The crashing sounds happened every now and then. Even my parents have explained it. The same thing always happens. We would run out to check, but nothing would be damaged. Bonus. I was on a school trip to Kuala Lumpur and at the hotel we all slept in pairs. On the first night, my roommate and I were getting ready for bed when we heard knocking on the door. We looked through the peephole, but there was no one there. So we chalked it up to the rest of our schoolmates messing with us. It happened several times until we opened the door to tell them off. Only there was no one around or in the hallway. The next day at breakfast, we're all recounting the story to our friends and a pair of roommates looked at each other uneasily and said, well, at least your knocking didn't come from inside the cupboard. I was staying in a student accommodation that was rumoured to have been an asylum way back, although we never knew for sure. What we did know is that the place was strange. It had a really creepy vibe about it, and a few of us experienced strange things. One guy kept waking up at 3am, every night, and I used to hear running on the floor above me. I thought it was just people messing around. However, when everyone moved out of that floor, the running kept on happening, usually around midnight. Even though no one was there, my friend visited one weekend, and although he's not really into supernatural stuff, even he was creeped out by it. The weirdest experience I had, however, happened on my last week staying at the place. I was well aware of the spirit that would follow me from the room next to mine to the door at night 
where I had been to the kitchen or the toilet. I became accustomed to it, even if it was creepy as anything. I had also been aware of entering my room once or twice, and my posters on the walls had the habit of falling down. Anyway, this night I was awake at 3.30am, and I just get this overwhelming feeling that there is someone standing right at the edge of my bed. It was as if they were standing right next to me, just watching me. I was absolutely petrified, and the only thing I could do was cower under the covers, turn my back to it, and just sit there. It was absolutely terrifying. Eventually, I made it off to sleep again, but it really freaked me out. Thankfully, it was the only time it ever happened, but once was enough for me. Back home, my dad occasionally sees a face staring at him from when he's laying in bed, only momentarily, and always just before my mum comes into the room. To make it stranger, our neighbour's room through the walls to my mum and dad's bedroom has had some freaky things over the years too, such as stuff flying off the shelves, not falling, flying off. It's got to be linked. Also, we were going to do some urban exploration. Me and a couple of other guys from work, we went to this abandoned RAF airfield, where the guy driving mentioned he'd seen some freaky stuff. He told us he felt a large weight in his bag while he was walking around, and he showed us a picture of him and an orb attached to the bag. Obviously, that's what the weight had been. So we're walking with the flashlight turned on our phone. As we get closer, we just feel this horrific feeling. It's hard to explain, but it's like the space around you is occupied, or that you're being watched and not alone. You could see the dark bulk of the building in front of us. There were two of us, with our torches on, myself and another guy. The other guy's phone started to cut out as we walked closer. He restarted it, and it would cut out again. It has never done that before or since, and we ran away from the building, and it worked fine for the rest of the night. Apparently, our AF airfields are covered in spirits. There are tons of stories of ghosts and spirits in that area. I think it must have been because of all the crew who never made it back. When my oldest daughter was around three, she started talking about someone called Alex. We just put it down to the usual imaginary friend sort of stuff. I never really thought much about it. Then, there was some strange occurrences going on in the house. Her electronic toys would randomly start up during the night. She was in a cot bed at the time, so it wasn't possible it was her unless she jumped the side of the cot bed and climbed back in, which she couldn't do. One of the weirdest things was when I was getting her ready for a bath. Normal routine was to take her dirty clothes off on the upstairs landing, then throw the dirty clothes over the banister onto the floor at the bottom of the stairs. There was nobody else home at the time, except me and her. When I went downstairs after the bath, Expecting to pick up the clothes at the bottom of the stairs, I found them sitting on the floor of the kitchen, which is a few metres to the left of the house. It was physically impossible for the clothes to end up where they did. The icing on the cake was when we happened to mention about the little ones, imaginary friend, to the next door neighbour. They had lived in their house since it was built, same time ours was built, and when we told them about the friend being called Alex, they informed us that the original owner of the house was called Alex, and he had passed away in the house one night while watching TV. The neighbours could well have been pulling our legs, but they were an elderly couple who were always very sincere, and I have no reason to believe that they were just trying to wind us up. In time, she stopped talking about Alex, but seriously creeped us out when we found this out from our neighbours. We never mentioned anything about it to her as she got older, and certainly wouldn't tell her about Alex having been a deceased owner of the house. There was never any sinisters going on, just little things that seemed to defy logic. 
This certainly did make me wonder though. A few years ago one night at around 3am, my wife and I were sleeping and I feel myself slowly wake up from a really deep sleep. My eyes started lifting up and as soon as they did, I focused on the lamp on my dresser and it slid off and shattered to the floor. My wife quickly sat up and looked at each other horrified. My wife and I quickly sat up and we both looked at each other horrified at the startling noise. We both agreed we'd clean it up in the morning and went back to sleep. The next morning when we woke up, the lamp was at the foot of the bed, about five feet from where it fell, completely intact and not broken at all. We were both still trying to make sense of it. Before my girlfriend and I moved in together, my girlfriend lived alone in the house she owned. During the course of us dating and me spending the night, she finally explained some of the weird stuff going on in her home. Weird banging sounds happening at all hours. Other weird sounds. Seeing things from the corner of your eye. There were even a couple of times where she saw something walking around the house. She described it as being a robed figure, almost like the Grim Reaper. There was also the feeling that something was watching you from behind. You know, that same feeling that causes the hair on the back of your necks to stand on end. But the worst was this constant foreboding feeling coming from one of the unused bedrooms. These happenings scared her so much, simply explaining it caused her to start crying. Now I am a skeptic about these things. I am a guy that would watch all these paranormal shows and find the logical reasoning for things happening. Since we were just dating at the time, and I really liked her, I wanted to impress her. I wanted to show her my bravado and lack of fear for the thing in the room. Get out of the house, you asshole! I yelled into the room. Do not bother her again, you hear me? Or you'll have to deal with me. And you don't want to mess with me. Oh, big mistake. Really big mistake. I spent the night at my girlfriend's. Sometime in the middle of the night, I suddenly woke up to a night terror. I'd had a couple before, but I didn't experience anything crazy. But this instant felt intentional. It felt like I had poked a bear, and it wanted to show me that it didn't want to be messed with. I woke up to being paralyzed, heart throbbing being able to see and hear what was around you. I could feel my girlfriend lying next to me, and I could hear her breathing. That wasn't the scary part though. The scariest part was hearing. Yes, hearing. Something run out of the room and down the stairs, away from me and towards the unused bedroom. I could hear it make its way through the house. It's a small house, but whatever. I desperately tried to get out of this night terror. I tried telling myself it was a dream. I tried praying. I desperately tried calling out my girlfriend's name. I knew it was a night terror, but even still couldn't get it out. Every time before, I could get out of a night terror by reminding myself what it was. She somehow heard my whisper calls and woke me up. I didn't go back to sleep that night. Both my grandfather and my grandmother have told me this story in almost the exact same way. Neither of them know the other has told me, so I tend to believe them. My grandfather had two sisters who were twins. He was only two years older. As teenagers just for grins, they decided to make a pact. They each promised one another that the first one to die out of the three of them would try to make contact with the other two remaining siblings just to see if the afterlife was real. Some 30 years later, one of my grandfather's sisters dies in a car wreck, and about a year later, my grandfather says he would receive a phone call from his remaining sister. This was just her checking in and catching up. What was weird about this 
was that my grandfather owned one of those really old-timey telephones, where you pretty much speak into a box on the wall and hold the earpiece to your ear. He told me that this was only when his still-alive sister would call him. He would round the corner of the house on the way to pick up the ringing phone, only for it to stop ringing and for him to see the earpiece dangling by the cord. The only time this happened was when his only remaining sister would call him. Creepy stuff, man. My grandparents live in a large house in a really, really small town in Mexico. Their house is really big. It has a room that is isolated from the rest of the house. It has really small windows, so it's always dark and cold. Anyway, my aunt and uncle lived in another city and often visited my grandparents. They always stayed in that room. My cousin, three years old at the time, stayed with them. One night, when most of the family was staying there, my cousin started to scream really loud and started yelling, tell him to go away, he doesn't want me here. Her parents managed to calm her down after taking her to another room. She said she had seen a little kid and that he was really scary. Everyone dismissed it as something a little kid made up. About three years later, my grandma's sister also visited and stayed in that room. The next morning, after staying in the room, she told my grandma that she hadn't been able to sleep, that the little crying kid kept waking her. My grandparents asked her where she had heard the kid, and she said, in the far right corner of the room. The first incident with my cousin was 15 years ago. The one with my grandma's sister was around 12. And six years ago, my aunt also heard the crying in the room. She was unaware of the other incidents and obviously freaked out. I have never had anything happen to me or heard anything in the room. But about a month ago, my cousin brought her one-year-old daughter to my grandparents' house. She is starting to walk and understand a few words, and I love to keep her entertained and play with her while my cousin eats or whatever. So the little tyke was walking with me, holding her hand. She starts walking towards the room, and I remember what happened there before. She goes in, and just to be funny, I ask her if she wanted to play with the little kid in the room. She started walking towards the far right corner. She started pointing towards the corner, and as soon as we got to it, started crying. It was at that moment that I picked her up and bolted from the room. I haven't been back there since, and I am still scared to go near it. So my dad and my pregnant stepsister were at the house when my stepsister's friend and three-year-old son came over. The boy went off and started playing. They heard him laughing and giggling to himself. So they went over and asked him who he was talking to. He replied, Shema. Everyone was just confused and went on with their day. Later, he keeps doing it and came back and said that he was playing with Shamer again. My dad got curious and asked him who Shamer was. The boy walked up to my stepsister and pointed at her and said, Shamer, Kettle. Now the weird part. My stepsister's name is Cheyenne, and her mum's name is Gretel, like Hansel and Gretel. Gretel passed away in September 2014, and this was roughly the start of 2015. So the little boy was supposedly playing around with the ghost of my stepmom. One of my favourite stories would have to be the spirits in my former friend's house. There were two shadowy figures in the hallway and two bad spirits upstairs. One day, me, my friend, her mum and her grandma are all sitting at the back room of the house next to the staircase. My friend was six months pregnant at the time, and she went off to use the bathroom. Her grandma went outside to smoke a cigarette, and me and her mum are sitting there talking 
when we start hearing the sound of a music box slash baby mobile slash lullaby toy coming from upstairs. There was nothing upstairs at the time, except my friend's brother's bed and clothes. At night, me and my friend's mum would sit up and watch the two shadow men walk up and down the hallway. They'd walk out of the bathroom, which I never went alone into because things would fly off the shelves at me and cross the hall into my friend's dad's room. And they'd stand at the end of the bed and watch over him whilst he slept. If he was drunk and high, they'd shake their heads and you could feel their sadness. One night, we heard someone whispering in the dining room. And of course, no one but me and my friend were there. We grabbed our shoes and keys and hauled us out of there. I lived in a weird house as a kid, which resulted in chairs being moved into other rooms when I was the only one home. Kitchen cupboards opening late at night when no one else was awake. And I could be sitting on the computer in a lit room at night and watch as black clouds would float through a closed door and sit suspended in the air across the room from me. I heard footsteps that would walk outside my door and loud breathing. I was so terrified as a child that I ended up sleeping with my music playing so I could tune out the noises. I still to this day can't sleep without music and I probably have convinced myself that most of it wasn't real as I aged if I wasn't certain that something was happening. It was around 11am in the morning and my younger brother and I were waiting at home while my mother was out doing jobs. We were waiting for her to come back to pick us up. So we were sitting by the front window watching for cars. And then we heard the radio play from my brother's room. We both didn't understand why it was on all of a sudden. So we walked up to my brother's room. My brother hid behind me and I had to walk into the room first. And the second I crossed the threshold, it went silent. On closer inspection, it wasn't plugged in and there were no batteries in the back of it. There was no logical explanation for it playing. And my brother, a young boy, and my brother, a young boy, had a bunch of matchbox cars and an old car playmat. And my brother, a young boy, that had a bunch of matchbox cars and an old car playmat, swore and declared he had parked the cars neatly on it in lines. But when I went in there, the cars were thrown all over the room. Luckily, we moved out that house. But my brother and I still remember the radio saga clearly to this day. And it's pretty much the only reason I know I wasn't completely crazy as a kid. I lived in one particular house a few years ago, where we always suspected there was some sort of supernatural activity going on. We'd leave items in places, then come back to find them gone. We'd leave a room, to find the door had closed on its own, seeing figures in shadows, that sort of thing. However, one incident topped all of these. I was laying in my bed one night, reading just before going to sleep, when all of a sudden, the room temperature seemed to drop, shortly followed by that gut feeling you get when you suspect that something isn't quite right. Curious as to why this happened all of a sudden, I lifted my head to scan the room to see what was up, only to encounter a large black hole situated at the foot of my bed, hanging slightly ajar from the far wall. I had no idea what the hell this thing was. I can only describe it as an absence of anything, like there was nothing there. It felt so cold and truly evil. Thankfully, not being completely paralyzed by fear, I remembered reading somewhere once that ghosts, spirits, and whatever else can only mess with you if you invite them in. So I yelled at this thing to go away and that it wasn't welcome, as well as a whole bunch of other rude expellatives. After a while, the thing converged in on itself. After a while, this thing converged in on itself, and that horrible feeling seemed to disappear along with it. 
I still have yet to explain what is most likely the strangest thing that's ever happened to me. I also once messed around with a Ouija board. Those things are really not as fun as everyone else puts them out to be. I was driving home from work one night when I see a little girl on a tricycle riding across the street and into some woods that drop off into a creek. I break and skid to avoid her and walk to where I thought she fell. I see no one and a cop pulls up and asks me what I'm doing. I tell him that he was the person I needed and that I just saw a little girl riding her tricycle across the street heading into the area where it dropped off. He then tells me right away that I see what some other drivers see here. It was more than 40 years ago that a child was killed riding her tricycle across that section of the road. Others have seen her multiple times, sometimes walking, other times with her tricycle. After some construction brought changes to that section of the road with expansions and barriers, all sightings of her ceased. I used to live in a house that backs up to a big public open space where there are all hiking trails, lots of joggers and people walking their dogs. Anyway, one night I had a kind of creepy dream that an old lady came into my room and was trying to get me to come outside. The dream woke me up. So I got some water and turned off my fan because it was cold and then I fell asleep again. I went right back to the same dream with this old lady coming into my room and calmly saying I have to go outside now. I kept telling her no, it was too cold and I woke up again and my fan was on. I figured I must have thought I turned it off or the button got stuck. So I got up, turned it off and went back to sleep. This time I had the same dream except she was much older looking. And in this one, she was really agitated. She kept telling me to go outside. I got up in the dream and followed her into the hallway. When I got to the hallway, she wasn't there. And then I woke up and I was actually standing in the hallway. I've never ever walked around in my sleep before or after this. Also, my fan was on when I went back to my room. At this point, I was so freaked out. I got something to eat and watch TV for a couple of hours. I went back to bed around five or six. The dream didn't come back. The messed up part is that a couple of days later, I saw there were police cars in the open space and I asked my mum what happened. And she said they found an older woman who was reported missing a few days ago. She must have had a heart attack or stroke or something on the trail by my house and they had only just found her body. When I was 10, I moved out of the room me and my brother had shared since I was born and into the recently renovated attic. It was a great room, long and narrow, with large bay windows at either end. For reference, think of Kevin's room in Home Alone, only slightly less awesome. At first, it was great. I had my own space. I could stay up late when everyone else in the house had gone to bed and I had my own TV. Almost immediately after I moved in, I would have vivid recurring dreams in which I would wake up early in the morning and sit by the bay window overlooking the backyard. There would always be a woman sitting alone on our patio set. She had a pale bluish glow to her as if she was lit by the light of the moon, even on nights when the moon wasn't out. And I remember her being very still, barely moving at all sitting with her back to me, although I did not know exactly what I was seeing. I felt very unnerved by her presence and would make a special effort to remain perfectly silent while I watched her. For a time, for a time, that was all the dream consisted of, silently watching this pale woman sit at our patio. One night, after I had been living in the attic for several months, I had the dream again. It played out as usual, with the pale woman sitting with her back to me while I watched her in silence. This time, however, as I shifted positions, I knocked the TV remote control off the bay window seat and it fell to the ground, turning the TV on. 
The TV blared loudly for a second before I retrieved the remote and turned it back off. When I looked back down the bay window to the patio, the woman was no longer turned away from me, but standing and looking up. I had never seen her face before, and it was horrifying. She was a hideous old woman, looking up at me with a look of rage, and I nearly pissed myself in fear. I covered my eyes for a second, hoping she would simply go away. And when I opened my eyes again, I saw the pale woman walk through the wall into my house, directly underneath where I was standing. In a panic, I ran to the stairs that led to the main floor so I could hide in my parents' room. When I got to the top of the stairs, there she was. She stood at the bottom of the stairs looking up at me with murderous intensity. I let out a final girlish scream and woke up in my bed, soaking in a pool of cold sweat and piss. And I never had that dream again. I'll give you a bit of backstory first. When my mother was 13, her grandfather was walking in front of his house. When he had a massive heart attack and ended up dying in the front of the local fire station. Go forward about 15 years later, when her grandmother was hit hard with Alzheimer's, and she died three weeks later, with her sons, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren all around her. My parents, brother and I, have lived in my great-grandparents' house since 98, and when I was 16 or so, I saw a ghostly woman in her wedding dress walk through our kitchen and then phase through our back door. I, of course, freak out and ask both my mother and brother if they had just seen what I saw. Of course, they didn't see anything. And when I look up to the top right corner of our living room, I saw the wedding day picture of my great grandparents smiling at me. I'm basically panicking at this point, but proceed to push it into the back of my head. Later that day, when my father gets home from work, I begin to walk upstairs when I notice a six foot one shadow pop up behind me. Being nervous, I look back again and it was nowhere to be found. So, I quickly ran upstairs, put the clothes away and run back downstairs. When getting into the living room, I asked my father if he'd gone to the restroom, seeing how he is six foot one and he tells me no which made me panic some more. I tried to fall asleep that night, but I feel as if I'm being watched. Three weeks later, my parents and brother went to bed, and I was sitting in the kitchen playing some Skyrim on my laptop, when I felt a cold wind on my back. I of course turn to see what is occurring. When I see, when I see a shadowy hand appear across the back room light, which led me to saying, of course there's a ghost in my back room. Why wouldn't there be? I of course go back there to check, to see if my father, to see if my father had snuck in for some reason. But nobody was there to greet me. The supernatural activity stops, and after that, about three years later, on March 25th, I was doing laundry in the back room, and as I unloaded the dryer, with my ear to the window, I could hear a female voice whisper into my ear, which made me run out of there as fast as I could. Needless to say, my great-grandparents are still lingering in my house, and I'm sure they will be for years to come. When I was a junior in college, I studied abroad in Rome for six months. It was beautiful and amazing, and I was drunk for most of it. But the ghost was the best part. The apartment my roommates and I lived in was in this building that was built in the 1700s, or something ridiculous like that. And it was pre-decorated from a family that lived there a few years before my program bought it out. It's important to note that the room I stayed in was decorated like a little girl's room. Think ABC wallpaper and butterfly stickers everywhere. Everything was pretty normal for the first few months. 
until it came closer to our school's finals. One night, while I was laying in bed, I noticed that the corner looked extra dark. There was a street lamp outside that kind of lit up the room. But this was a pitch black nothingness kind of dark. When I looked closer to the spot, I saw what looked like a man with a flat brimmed hat on. Screw that. Obviously, I ran to turn on the light, but no one was there anymore. I went back to bed and didn't sleep at all. This continued for the next week or so, and I saw the man a few more times. He didn't seem threatening after a while, and just kind of stood there. I mentioned it to my roommates, whose bed was above mine one day, and she said that she had seen him too, which made us believe we were hallucinating from final stress. Then one night, a few days later, I'm laying down and feel the mattress dip like someone else is sitting on the bed. I looked and didn't see anything, but somehow I just knew it was him. I lay there for a minute, when I feel him put his hand on my leg, not in a creepy way, but more like in a comforting parent sort of way. I laid there still, not wanting to move until I somehow fell asleep. When I woke in the morning and told my roommate, thinking it must have been a dream or something, she told me the exact same thing had happened to her. We're both pretty sure we're going insane at this point. So we decide to ask our very old and very Italian neighbor if she had seen anyone near our apartment. This is when she tells us of the little girl that used to live in the room that my roommate and I are currently sleeping in. That she had drowned in the bathtub that we had been using all semester. And after she died, the dad killed himself from the grief. She then very casually told us that he had haunted the apartment ever since. She did not seem to think it was a big deal and offered us homemade bread and went back inside. After asking our other neighbors for more info, it seemed that the dad would comfort anyone who'd stayed in the little girl's room as a way to continue to comfort his daughter after she had died. I lived with my family in an apartment where our living room window and my bedroom faced the corridor. So basically, anyone could walk past our living room and bedroom window. That's why curtains is a must for privacy. So I have my computer table set beside the window. So I play my PC games and my right side will be the window. So this one night at around midnight, I was playing my PC game, and suddenly, I slowly began to hear a breathing sound. Someone breathing heavily and loudly, in continuous steady pace, right besides the right side of me, which comes from the window behind my curtain. I completely freak out, and decided to not open the curtain to see who the hell was doing that. I gather my family members to go into my room, and listen as they're all able to hear it. Now the curtains are all drawn for bedroom and living room, since it's so late at night. We slowly walked out to the main door, opened it slowly, and peeked out the corridor to see who the hell was doing the breathing sounds. No one was there. We were completely freaked out. Okay, rational explanation was maybe that a person had ran and taken the stairs slash lift down. We went back to my bedroom, and we could still listen to that breathing sound. Still freaked out. We stayed away from that area, and we weren't sure how long until it finally stopped. Heavy and loud breathing in steady paces behind the curtain and window. Freaky. Another time, I was talking to my friend via MSM webcam. Yes, this happened about 12 years ago. Showing her my clothes from my first virgin visit to the club. I walked out of my bedroom. This was in another bedroom since I changed bedrooms to get my clothes. When I came back to show her my clothes, she said, Hey, I just saw your sister walk past. Huh? She's not home. She replies, Yeah, short hair, above the shoulder and plink blouse. I go, No, she's not home. No one but me. 
I think you saw wrongly. She denies that she saw wrongly, and we resumed our webcam conversation. That just freaked me out. She saw a ghost girl walking past my webcam when I was nearby. Why? Well, I never had a haunted house, but the street I grew up on was cursed. Everyone on the street built their houses new there, so it was a new development. It was all big properties, so probably like 10 on the street. Something really bad happened to every house there. One suicide, one hit and run with a death, one cancer and death. One guy fell off a ladder and broke his neck. One kid, 18, was declared mentally insane. There was even more crap that happened, but I can't remember the specifics. One bad thing happened per house, and our house got off light, i.e. no one died or became paralyzed. Our dad became abusive to my mom and older siblings, and it destroyed our family. My mom and us kids moved away, and the next people who moved into our house built a big garage slash shed, and then their teenage son hung himself in it about a year later. We found out later on that an Aboriginal elder, as this is in Australia, found rock markings warning to stay away from the area, as there were very bad spirits there. I was in the sixth grade, staying the night at my buddy's house. Him and his older brother told me they had a ghost in their house, and that even the mum said she'd seen him. We were in his bonus room, trying to watch Stand By Me, and I heard something on the roof above me, like footsteps walking on top of the roof. When I asked them if they heard that, they said that they were used to it, and didn't even bother about when the movie finished. We went downstairs to get snacks, and when I let his puppy in from outside, I saw not one but two figures standing on the pool cover. I lost my shit and called my mum to pick me up, and only went to his house when it was bright outside, because I was terrified. From 3 to 13, I lived in a nice home out near Yosemite National Park. Nothing super spectacular about it. Four bedrooms, a den, a dining room, the norm. Just down a little dirt road, and... If you've ever been around those parts, you'll know, miles away from civilization. My whole childhood, I was visited by this girl in white. She never spoke. I would just wake up in the night and see or feel her there. I asked my dad, and his response every time was, the men in our family can see ghosts. My rationale of this, as I'm a skeptic, was that we had some sort of mild schizophrenia running through our family. It didn't bother me. She didn't look like other people. There was something off about her. After my father died, my mother decided to sell the house and went through a realtor. We never once had contact with the buyers. I only knew them by name. The buyers had a son who went to the same school as our old neighbors, dear friends of the family. And the son apparently came to school without sleeping repeatedly complaining that there was a girl who watched him at night, and that he needed to get out. Send shivers down my spine every time I remember this. My boyfriend and I had a child, and he left to go fight fires in another state. And that's when things started happening. Before, weird things would happen, like glass would randomly fall off the counter in the middle of the night, but nothing particularly intense. First thing that happened after he left was one night I was in the dining room alone and the light dimmed by itself, turned off and went back on. I thought it was weird. And a couple of days later, my daughter had fallen asleep in the car while driving. So I brought her inside in the seat and let her finish her nap in the living room. Our living room window was huge. So I went outside to throw the ball for the dogs and I could still see her asleep in her car seat from the window. I started throwing the ball from the dogs when I look inside the living room window and notice a white mist floating from the stairs through the living room. I turn around to make sure it wasn't a cloud reflection or something, 
and looked back into the living room to see it still inside. I flipped the hell out, grabbed my daughter, and drove 45 minutes to my mum's house, and never stayed there alone again. I went to Denny's at 3am for steak. I was really craving it. On my drive up Harlem towards Niles, I passed a cemetery and saw a ghost of a woman walking slowly along the side of the road. Just as I was coming up beside her, she vanished. I slammed on my brakes, and shockingly, so did the car next to me. We both got out the car and looked at each other, and asked if we'd just seen the same thing. We stood there for several minutes, before a Park Ridge cop pulled up behind us, asking if everything was alright. We told him we saw the woman, and he calmly said, Oh yeah, she often does that. But y'all need to keep moving now, you're blocking the road. I saw a shadow person in the apartment I lived in three years ago. I was standing outside on the balcony one night, looking in through the window. From there, I could see the kitchen, and a small hallway, where the bathroom was, and the door to the bedroom. The kitchen lights were on, but there were no lights in the hallway, so it was a bit dim. I was waiting for my then boyfriend to come out of the bathroom, because I wanted to tell him something. I looked down, and adjusted my shirt for about five seconds, and when I look up, I saw him walk into the bedroom. So I opened up the balcony door to call him over, just when the bathroom door opens and he came out. I stood there in silence, wondering who or what I'd just seen seconds ago. I went inside and quickly walked into the bedroom, expecting to see an intruder hiding in there. But it was empty. I clearly saw a man walk in there, or more like the silhouette of a man, considering the dim light, and it took me about 20 minutes to be able to tell my boyfriend. The following nights, I tried to replicate the scene, but I never saw anything that even came close to that again. I never believed in ghosts. I still don't know what to believe. But I can tell you what happened in Newton. I moved into my friend's apartment. He explained to me that there's a whole third floor that was unused. I was like, oh great, this is a sweet deal. Cheap rent, whole floor, plenty of space. After the first week, nothing was really unusual. Though when the house settled, the closet door would pop open in the room next to me. This would only happen two to three times a week. The wood floors were very creaky, but all in all, the place got plenty of sunlight. Within the first month, I started getting creeped out for no reason. I would wake up in the morning as if I heard something walking around. I saw my friend's girlfriend walking in the other room while blankly staring at me. I said, hey, got up and walked over into the room, only to see that she wasn't there. Funny, I thought. Maybe I was partly dreaming, having just woken up or something. Eventually, I got more and more creeped out, until one day, I was standing in the room, about to head downstairs, and I felt as if someone blew air in my face, at point blank almost offensively. It was intense. My hair stood on end, and I calmly walked downstairs, and my friend's girlfriend asked me what was wrong. I calmly muttered, Oh, nothing. Upstairs is haunted, in a joking manner. Then my friend and his girlfriend started arguing, saying, See? I told you. The argument progressed into a full-scale endless debate. I had found out that the landlord would not allow the tenants to rent slash use the third floor for this very reason. He even said to only use the first and second floor of the building, and was disclosed to be haunted on the lease paperwork. I remember when I was younger, my uncle told me a chilling story that happened to him. The paranormal activity happened right after his dad my granddad had died. My granddad's final days had dragged on and been sad and long. He was in his bed at the end for weeks, and he was very ill. 
one day, he just didn't wake up anymore. And although we all thought he was resting in peace, we were wrong. That's when unusual things began for my uncle. The night my grandfather died, he began to hear strange noises, as his room was directly next to my granddad's. The noises sounded like scratches against the walls. He would wake up, warily into the room, and check if a stray cat or strange animal had entered. But when he went to look, nothing. These strange noises persisted for a week, but he didn't feel like telling anyone because he was afraid. But one day, when he fell asleep, he had a dream of what felt like a vision of a person holding his hand and leading him to a wardrobe in his father's room. It was a dark, creepy dream that made him uncomfortable. In the morning, he went to the wardrobe and all that he found were his father's old clothes. He couldn't understand what he was looking for, if anything, but he felt uneasy. That night, the noise was different. It was as though there was a small earthquake in the bedroom next door to his, which was strange. How could there be an earthquake in an isolated room? We're used to earthquakes. They happen a lot in Colombia, and it was dark and somewhat slightly chilling. And he had a strong feeling that he should check. He remembers walking into the room, and even though it was just next door, it had felt as though the corridor had stretched a mile. It felt darker than usual, colder. The only thing he could hear now was the thud of his own heartbeat, which felt as though he was about to puke. When he entered the room, he headed for the wardrobe, which he says he can remember had a dark figure standing next to it, just like the one in his dream, leading him to it. He was too afraid to face it, but looked once more into the wardrobe this time making sure he was thorough. He looked through all the pockets until he reached the coat my granddad used to wear. In the breast of the pocket, he found some papers. The papers seemed to be an apology for my grandmother. The details, he didn't really want to disclose, but he mentioned that once the papers were found, the noises and hauntings were gone. He says today that he regrets not facing the figure that hovered by the wardrobe for he knows it was his father, and his dad had led him to ensure that his mother, my grandmother, got the letters he had written. I think my grandfather felt as though he couldn't leave us until he made his peace with whatever he had to do. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. If you're hearing this, that means you made it to the end. I just want to say that the raw version of this, so all the recording with no edits, was four and a half hours. I'm going to guess that Chopped Up, this is somewhere between three and a half to four hours long. So you did a fantastic job listening to this. Well done. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of work to put together. If you did, if you would be so generous to leave a like and a comment, that would seriously be appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to receive your nightly spooks, as I do post every night. If there's a story that you wish to share, feel free to send it to my email or post it to my Reddit. And again, if you missed the face reveal, it's in the description. But anyway, for now, guys, I'm going to sign off because my voice feels like sandpaper. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.